need sex appeal out of you guys. Jared, I need you, you to do that voiceover. Give me that Sunday, Sunday, Sunday trailer. Coley, get my coffee. All right, guys, let's Hollywood the f out of this thing. All right, give me an epic shot. Not epic enough. Come on, more epic. Okay, too epic. I love it. All right, Jared, voiceover. A champion will be crowned. Come on, give me more, Jared. I need more from you than that. A champion will be crowned. Action on Reservoir Dogs, slow-mo walk. Who will step forward? Work it, work it, just like that. Bad Boys 2, the 360. Who will rise to the challenge? I love it, beach scene. <laughs> Who will be Top Gun? <laughs> Who will be the water boy? You know what make this better? Car chase. It's a race to the finish. All right, guys, big time finish now. I need, yeah. I need fireworks, volcanoes, lions, bears, sharks with lasers. I need money falling from the sky. I need flames, explosions. Give me all the things that are great. There can only be one winner. America is watching. That was beautiful. That was amazing. That's a wrap. Ah, in your face, Spielberg. Tommy? Tommy? There it is, the bright and shiny trophy. That is the Nitro Rallycross Championship Trophy, which we've actually renamed the Ken Block Trophy in honor of KB Forever. I'm Jared Deanna, Andrew Coley. We're back at it like a track addict. That's right. The first round of the triple header is in the bags, right? But guess what? We got beautiful weather, but not the prettiest for Mr. Robin Larson yesterday. No, so Robin Larson, championship leader. You'll see the points up behind us here. Larson still leads, but he had his worst day of the year yesterday with a P8, retired from the final. Andreas Backward, who's tracing him down, had his second win, and Backward is now full of confidence. So that title fight between the two RS Cartel drivers is getting pretty exciting. Fraser McConnell, Ollie Erickson, Travis Pastrana, they're all still in the mix. They can afford to take a few more risks, but yeah, it's all to play for. It's gonna go down to the wire. Yeah, so as we go into round nine, and of course round 10, who is the championship gonna be held by? Who's gonna hold that trophy? Who's gonna get reeking of champagne? All I know is that that is a solid sunburn, my man. <laughs> Andrew Coley, Jared Deanna, we're gonna be your tour guides on this fantastic event. For more information, we throw it down to the pits with Katie Osborne. It's another round for Andreas Bakarud, and coming off of last night, it has to be an all-time high for you as you're chasing down the championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, coming into this weekend, we knew it was going to be tough. With the weather which has been here in California lately and the, the track being rough, you know, I had to send it high. Uh, but, you know, over the last few races, I haven't really had the speed. Uh, and so for me this morning to do uh, a BP2 in a qualifying time, it barely been beaten by Travis Pastrana in that last lap. It was a huge relief for me, even like, even a little bit better than the race win yesterday. Cause like, even though I was winning yesterday, I felt like I didn't have like the best of speed. So I want to uh, show myself every time I go out there that I can be up there, yeah. So you have a little bit more confidence, you have a little bit more speed. So what's gonna be the kicker today? I think uh, starts uh, are gonna be uh, a very big key. Uh, also not to beat the tire and turn one not to go too wide so they sneak up and inside. It's starting to be a long list. But before we get to today's racing, let's go ahead and take a look back at what happened in round eight. Round eight qualifying from Glen Helen. Heat one underway with Robin Larson getting the whole shot around the outside of Travis Pastrana. The championship leader though was passed down at turn two. They were side by side over the gap jump. And in the next hairpin, Pastrana got a bit too sideways and avoiding him, Larson ended up in one of those huge tires trackside. Damage to the front of his car. Was it damage to his championship aspirations as well? Pastrana coming round onto the front straight. Checkered flag for him and he would go through to the front row of the final. Heat two, Andreas Backward versus Fraser McConnell. McConnell gets the whole shot. 
Backward losing out to Ericsson in the background as well. It was looking good for the Jamaican. But if you look closely on the exit here, you'll see he managed to DB both of his rear tyres. So no way for him to respond to the aggressive Norwegian. Backward sneaks through the inside and will join Pastrana on that front row. Semi-final number one, Conor Martel versus Fraser McConnell on the run through the first few corners. Martel having a look up the inside, this little tap sent him spinning round. It was all looking good for the Jamaican, but he had issues later in the race again. And Timo Scheider making the pass. It will be Scheider and McConnell going through to the final on row two and row three. Semi-final two, time for Robin Larson to try and get that championship chase back on track. Good start by him. Plenty of attention from the Ericsons throughout the encounter. But it was Larson going through to the final with Ollie Eriksson. On to the final then. Larson from row two with a good start. Scheider coming around the outside. But watch this on the straight. Larson gets into all sorts of trouble. By some miracle holds on. Ollie Eriksson behind him having problems as well. We're looking forward to a decent fight all the way through the final. Come the Joker strategy. Backward looking to try and pass Travis Pastrana. And Pastrana pushing just a little bit too hard. Rolled one of his tyres off the rim. Tiny bit of contact between them, but Backward going on to take the checkered flag and his second win of the season. Here are the championship standings at the end of round eight. Robin Larson still at the top there, but that is his worst performance of the year, and it means that Backward and McConnell are just a little bit closer. They likewise have gapped Oliver Erickson and Travis Pastrana, so if the results continue to go that way, we might see a couple more drivers drop out of the championship fight today. Taking a look at that, just what's going on here at Glen Helen. 30% of the season is going down here within these hollowed grounds. I mean, that's that's huge. That's massive. That's, yeah, it that's is. That's mega, yeah. some would say. It is. It is mega, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And obviously your your attitude to how your weekend's going, it, when there's three in a row, there's no chance to reset. You're not get, able to go away, come back next week and go again. So pressure's on. Yeah. All right, so taking a look at uh, what's going on here, Robin Larson still leads the pack, but Andreas Backroot, just an absolute, you know, you can just feel his kind of energy coming off of it and his mom and dad and everybody. I mean, let's take a look back. I mean, here we are at Glen Helen. We've had a round here previously, but we've seen we've seen it all. We've seen the birthplace of Rallycross. We've seen, you know, Stringness, which I have a very difficult time saying. But, <laughs> but, but also ERX, all these other places. Let's take a look back at the culmination of this 22 slash 23 season. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Back to Rallycross next. Send it. George McGinnis has gone off the side of the jump with broken steering. Olofsson takes it at the flat. Oh, look at that. We're in Sweden. Turn one go in a Long old train, and look at that. Almond, Jansen, and McGinnis are your podium finishers. It's a beautiful day at ERX. Tommy Howman is going to win four events in a row and win it. The European Championship for NRX next. Round two of the USA leg of NRX next. Thought he might lift. McGinnis hanging on. Disastrous day yesterday. Today, top step of the podium. Check the flag. Jansen wins. And we are here in Arizona for round five. On the brakes, but Casper Jansen's there at the merge. Contact between them. Right now, Casper and McGinnis are pushing. It's an Absolute arm wrestling match. Casper Jansen takes his second win of the American part of the season, so it's two in a row for him. But you guys need to be watching out for this man. Casper Jansen coming through in the blue and white machine. He's going to be your NRX Jeez. next North American champion. Coley, we're taking a look at these next vehicles, which is a spec class similar to the Group E half the horsepower but still a very competitive chassis elaborate on what's at stake here because we've seen european we've seen american this is essentially the world championship yeah it is i mean this is this is bragging rights isn't it this weekend we brought together our champions we on the front row there on the right hand side you got tommy how who won the european series on the left hand side you got casper jansen who tied up the north american series actually on row two you got simon olifson who earlier on uh, last year won the rally x nordic series yep. which visited the same circuit like strang nas so those are your three champions jimmy henderson's been on the pace as well three cars for back 40 motorsport and uh, yeah we'll run through, through a bit of the spec and stuff when these guys are out on track as well yeah the back 40 motorsport team you can see the uh the orange checker there lane vikela eric gordon on that back row uh, again the, the the gentleman to watch casper Janssen, simon olofsson i mean all of them just given the track and the conditions understanding what they need to do how the track is transforming how the group e vehicles are dealing with this right and then now here's this next vehicle 
Taking a look at the grid, NRX next World Finals. Tommy Hellman, Casper Janssen, Jimmy Henderson, and Simon Olsen on that second row, and bringing up the rear, Eric Gordon and Leigh Michaela. So yeah, Janssen on the pole in the blue and white. Remember, really successful up in those snow races, but missing some of the super tight competition up there. Tommy Hellman is not going to make this easy for him. Um, Hellman on a, a one-off outing with Farren, Team Farren. Can he get the whole shot here? Off the line then, Collison on road two will try and find a way through as well, but it's a good start by Casper Janssen. Helmer trying to go the long way around, still in there at the minute, going to come over the first crest, has to give in to P2. Uh, so Helmer slots in, Casper Janssen leads, Olofsson's right there, look, he's got a great exit through turn two, coming down to the braking zone, see if anyone has a look. Helmer having a cheeky look up the inside, but they're keeping it really clean. And remember, these guys don't take the gap jump. The left-hand side is their standard line, and the right side is their joker lap. Yeah, they're not taking the big gap jump they just don't have the horsepower if they were down you know you don't want to hit see them hit the face you know you don't no. want to hit the other side no. you don't you don't want to case it as they say case the landing all right so Casper Janssen got the clean air he is out front Hallman sitting in second Olofsson in third and Casper Janssen just an absolute weapon just he, he, he barely speaks English I love the kid just he's always got a smile no he, he is a bit of a broken English right but yeah he loves he's, it he's shy as well Jared you he's, know, he's very shy he's a, he, but he's not not shy behind the wheel. Casper Janssen, last year's NRX Next champion, remember? Love it. Trying to take that title against Hellman again this year. Effectively, His language this is, is winning. Is Sorry, i got to correct myself there. His language is winning. That's there what he does. There we go. There, podiums and trophies podiums. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So Henderson went joker on the first lap and he's 7.5 back. He is dangerous, Henderson, coming from that truck racing background, Pro 4 and stuff, but he's got to grips with the NRX Next cars really well. Interesting, these three drivers who compete against each other many times before, yeah. none of them have gone joker yet because they know they'll get dropped back into traffic Jared and then they'll lose too much time I mean you gotta think you got four laps and, and and without that you know obviously the gap jump the joker where that plays into it you know this is a world championship as we were talking about you can see them casing that kind of getting into it you have to think about your equipment how is how is it going to survive you in order to win the race you have to finish the race Lane Michaela's going well here Jared he's only 1.5 seconds off Yo, the back of this pack let's of go four Lane. or running it all the way down the wall Simon Olofsson using that absolutely every inch of track width. I reckon one of them will go this lap because there's only four laps. There's no point in all having the same strategy. Somebody will go. Casper Janssen, too much rotation. He's lost time. Hellman responds and so does wow. Olsen. That is great. They might, they, they might have done that themselves just looking at the mistake from Janssen. Now Janssen knows he's lost time. He's going to have to nail this lap if he wants to hold on to the lead. That is huge. So Casper Janssen, our leader, with a big checkup. You saw him over-rotate. He, he, he lost seconds. He lost time. Henderson. Now here's the zipper. Henderson was in the mix, Jared. We did the gap was 7.5. He was close enough. So Henderson going with that early joke lap. These three have gone out out front on their own, and they haven't realised that he's a danger. So he's right there in the mix. It was a problem for Olofsson. Looking forward to seeing where's Hellman up at the split lane. Here comes Casper Janssen for his last lap. What's going on in the background? Yeah, so the big thing here is take a look at the joker lap. You see Janssen gaining ground. Noted, you can see the clock there, the stopwatch, saying he has the fastest lap. Kudos to him, but that's kind of interesting, even though he checked up. I don't know if that is absolutely efficient. Look at he is shaky going yeah. to that joker lap. Mistake into the joker. Watch here for Henderson. Henderson edged all three cars come the joker merge. He's going to try and edge Casper Janssen as well. Janssen coming up now over the crest. Whereabouts is head nice behind? So Casper Janssen, despite those mistakes and a little bit of untidiness Jared still has the pace so Casper Janssen just showing you his dominance he's he's been like this for I mean two years let's just call it what it is he's Casper Janssen is an absolute weapon I, I just love this kid just he's very stoic just has a good kind of scando feel to him I it just just has just a good vibe overall and he, he's delivering once again here at Glen Helen here's the checker flat Casper Janssen gets it even though Jimmy Henderson tried to challenge him, just couldn't put it together. I'll tell you what, Jared, what they'll, be, they'll be what they weren't watching Henderson. They, the, those three out front are your three champions. They've looked at Henderson, maybe not look, he's quick, but is he going to be quick yeah. enough? The Joker strategy, they weren't covering Henderson off. So maybe they should have responded to him on the first lap, but they didn't want to sit in traffic. Right. It's tough as it's the toughest job in the in the business for me is the spotters who call these guys joker laps. The True. pressure is on and they can lose the race for the drivers. Yasin gets the win, Jimmy Henderson. Keep in mind this is just the semi-final, so the bragging rights continues to find out who will be the biggest victor here at Glen Helen.
multiple classes here at Glen Helen, and here we are looking at the Can-Am side-by-sides, the Star Race, and we are seeing a star-studded cast. And taking a look at it, you can see our six side-by-sides. Semi-final one, we're seeing Amanda Sorensen, who has driven everything from monster trucks to drift cars, Extreme E. She got P1 out there at Extreme E. Coley, I know you call that action, but Amanda Sorensen, uh, Greg on show. Thank you so much for joining us. He's the fast guy. He's the one to watch. He's on pole. Second row, you're looking at Leticia Buffani. Leticia from Brazil. She claims America. She claims she's, I mean, she's a talented girl on, what are we looking at? Is that what we're looking at? I think so. Nope, this is what we're looking at. Sarah Price, as well as Ben Mayer and Scotty Lawrence. Side by sides. That's what we are looking at right here. Sorts and Michelle, Buffani, Price, Mayer, and Lawrence are side by side semi final one. Ah, paperwork. <laughs> Yeah, Sorensen, Jared is dead right, was super impressive last weekend on her debut for Chip Ganassi Racing in uh, Extreme E. Can she take the fight to Gregoire Michaud, who's been so impressive in this series? Michaud is in the green car on the right. Look at the hold, that was really short. Sorensen, amazing wow. reaction time. Going to try and go the long way around Gregoire Michaud. Contact between them, but Sorensen's got the inside line, Jared. She's an absolute weapon at the minute. Yeah, Sorensen's background, her and her brother and younger brother, they race. They live in Las Vegas, just knowing and understanding Amanda. She is behind the wheel of a lot of different machines, and uh, she's really cut her teeth. I've, I've, I've seen her grow up, her and her brother, Brandon notably, but then obviously the younger brother, Carney. But again, Michaud, the, the, the lone Canadian, the lone maple syrup driver here, he's running on 10W Maple is what he's running on. Uh, but Sarah, yeah, let's talk about Price, right? I mean, she did Extreme E multiple years. She's trying to do different things with two wheels to four wheels. So much talent here between the side-by-sides. That's yeah. what I really love about this class. Absolutely. And also, Jared, to be fair, an equal grid here of guys and girls out there driving as well so the the entry list actually Demi Bagby has been withdrawn from the event if yeah. you wonder where she was uh, she had a role earlier on today so the medical team has said you know what you're gonna have to sit this one out and we'll see whether she can come back again uh, tomorrow or not sorry I was pointing out Ben Mayer Ben Mayer here oh look at look at oh wow going around the outside of Anna Sorensen going for that Johan Tire Joker lap Michelle who's that yeah it was Greg while Michelle got inside her Jared got up the inside the thought was looking for the pass did you see he was flirting a little bit with the car getting up on two wheels I don't know if Sorensen looked down low and was like you know what if he's there I'm just gonna go Joker straight away good strategy if that's the case or, or great spotting maybe do you remember Ben earlier this this season yeah. at ERX with Travis Bedham he paid up his bet because he was faster than him and Deegan in side by sides. FYI, thir 13 years old, 14 oh, years yeah, old yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Ben Mayer, he's young. absolute talent, weapon. He, yeah, he's in fifth position, but I'll tell you what, he got P2 earlier in qualifying. So here's a bet, Jared, that I found out about earlier on today. Connor Martell has, had forgotten a bet oh, that he'd had with right. Travis. Now, if Travis beats Connor at all three events uh, this weekend, then he will get a tattoo, and it will be uh, Travis versus. Uh, uh, Terry Madden, that's it. Spotter. Yeah, they're gonna play uh, Noughts and Crosses. Yep. Yeah. It's it's tic tac toe. Yeah, tic tac toe for you yeah, guys. Yeah, tic tac toe tattoo. In Europe. Yeah, and then, so that that will be uh, tattoo. Connor's bump. That'll be great, won't it? That's eh? great. I love it. Yeah, Travis tattooed me yesterday, so uh, you know, let's let's make some memories here. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about the racing here. Michelle Price, one and two, but all the other competitors, the other four, have taken the Yokohama Tire Joker lap. The Delta. What are we looking at here? Well, because wait, this it's, is the gap jump. This yeah, is different. This is an alternate. It's slightly different. At the minute, the gap is 6.0. It's actually gone up to 6.2. So now Gregoire Michaud has managed to get a little bit of space out front. Uh, it's saying oh, that Gregoire will hold, hold on. So our predictor thinks the Joker's about five. Uh, we'll see when it comes around to the merge. They're on the final lap, so Michaud will have to go in this time with Sarah Price in P2. Price is 4.1 seconds down the road, so she's going to lose a couple of places, definitely. Should see the rest of the pack swinging in any second now. A bit of understeer for Michaud through the exit, but nicely done.
Michaud, Michaud, he's kind of the the ringleader of all these can ams. He has a lot of seat times in these things, and, and he kind of curates all the vehicles. You know, it, it, I wouldn't say it's bragging right just because it's kind of like Travis, right? He's the unofficial mayor. Just oh, what do we got? We got a challenge here. What position? Jumping up there, the red and black going after Amanda Sorensen. Looks like Scotty Lawrence, Lawrence, I think. Yeah, Scotty yeah, Lawrence. Scotty was... Lawrence getting after it, challenging Amanda Sorensen for that second position. Oh, look at that. Ben Mayer jumps up in front of Amanda Sorensen. Sorensen's a little bit mugged there. Jared Michaud takes wow. the check and flag, but lots of position changes. And that just shows how that windrow works down on the back yep. section there. We've split that lane up. That's something new at Glen Helen. We haven't had that here before. But Greg Wama showed once he got into uh, clear air, was able to bang in some great lap times and take the win. The young buck, Ben, jumps in. Taking a look, we're looking at Greg Wama show, getting that win. Scotty Lawrence in second. The young buck, Ben Mayer, getting, getting third. Mana Swords and Sarah Price and Leticia Buffani. All right, well, well done by Side by Sides. We'll see more of them here today and even into tomorrow here at Glen Helen. Hey guys, Connor Martell here. Here we are at the last round of the 2022-2023 season here at Glen Helen. It's one of my favorite tracks. It's super flowy, a lot of big jumps. Here for a track preview at the final round in Glen Helen. Ride along with me with the Insta360 view. It's gonna be awesome. All right, here's a lap at Glen Helen up and over the start finish line into turn one really fast left hander right into a tabletop really fun section of the track down into left hander turn two this is leading us up to the big gap jump as we land the gap jump it's really hard on the brakes to get the car rotated into turn three long right hander trying to stay in where the grip is down the middle straight over a roller into a tabletop, hard on the brakes again into turn four. Now coming down into the back stretch. Over the tabletop, staying on the right side of the windrow. Really fast section through here, hard on the brakes, flick the car into the last turn. Coming now to the start straight, over the tabletop one, number two, and here's the finish. Glen Helen, an absolutely beautiful area. It's really green right now, which is awesome. I can't wait to get the cars on the track and get ready for this race. And uh, I'm super excited for the final. Hook up the children, hook up the youngest kids. Here you go. A-Shock, a modern performance energy drink created for today's active generation. Yokohama Tire, make every drive a performance. My Energy, driving the charge to a sustainable future. Feel the heat as we go into the heats. This is our Smirnoff Ice Mash Nitro Rallycross Road to the Finish Line. That's right, I'm Jared Deanda, Andrew Coley, Mr. Mega, sitting next to me talking some smack because guess what? He needs to be smacked with some SPF 100. He is burnt. But guess what? We're feeling the scorch here as we're going to find out what eight vehicles are going to be in the finals because it starts now. This is day two of three of a triple headed snake, baby. It's Venom, it's Bite, it, it's, dude, I'm looking, who's gonna win each round? Who's gonna win the championship? So many question marks. In front of you here, this is how the grid forms up. The next two races, the heats, the winners of each of those will go to row one. Remember yesterday, Pastrana and Backward went onto that front row and it was them who fought for the yep. victory. So if you want to be in with a shout of winning round nine, you really want to win these heat races and get up front. After that, two through for me to the semi-finals. And then of course our final two cars will come from the last chance qualifier. And we've got 10 entries today. So it's not like yesterday where it's kind of guaranteed. 
Yo, it, there's going to be a fight in the last chance qualifier for those spots on the grid. And some newcomers here this weekend. Yeah. Right, Timo? Who got... For, on his debut, Chris Meek's like, oh, I broke my back. Timo, here, take my car. Oh, he gets third place. Oh, man, I said I said to him, congratulations. Meek's not really, uh, Meek's not really excited about that. But also, hey, Benito, coming from Mexico, absolutely excited to see what kind of race class he's got here. Yeah, Benito Guerra, rally driver uh, by tradition, if you like, done tons of rallies. He said to me on the first day, it feels so weird to be at an event and, and, and really? feel, feel nervous. Yeah, feel nervous, yeah. Feel, feel like he's having to learn something new because he's been doing rallying. For t it's just a thing, you know, he's good at it, goes, he does it. Now he feels like he's got learn but these guys not so much to learn back already yesterday's winner confidence full of confidence confidence you can see it he's wearing it his dad is getting his name tattooed on his arm right now over in the pits so let's go we're ready to send it all right you can see the snow-capped mountains in the background andreas backroot our winner of the first uh first let's call it what it is the podium of the weekend Kevin Erickson right next to Robin Larson, Ollie Erickson, and then Connor Martell in that back row. Andrew Coley, if you will, the honors. Let's go. Day two of three here at Glen Helen. Round nine of Nitro Rallycross. 10 seconds to go. Backward, yesterday's winner, but keep your eyes on Robin Larson. He must turn around the poor day that he had yesterday. Can he put anything off from that second row? Erickson with a good start. Backward trying to go round. His brother Erickson is up behind Ollie. He's in behind Kevin. Backwards having to slot into P2 straight away. Both the Ericsons through. Larson is in P4. Backward in P3 is Kevin Erickson leading from Ollie Erickson. You know what I'm seeing here? First and foremost, more dust. From yesterday to today, the track's dried out. Not as muddy, not as slick. You're seeing that dust. So that's going to impede on your vision as well as the track, the viscosity, how you're going to slide around, how you're going to navigate the car. Are you going to DB the Yokohama tires? I think we're going to see less of that today because the track is harder and so the cars are able to rotate like this a little yep. bit early. You can see it But you saw a bite. You saw, as, you as saw I said that it, bite. There comes the commentator's <laughs> curse, doesn't yeah. it? Bottom of the left-hand side, Oliver Erickson and Connor Martell. That little blue diamond tells you they've taken the joke out. Everybody takes it once in each race. Yesterday, Jared, the delta was about seven seconds. We don't know what it is yet today. I think it's going to be quicker. Yeah. Just the way they're whipping through there. That joker lap, the Yokohama tire joker lap. Two, you got a left 90, right 90. Like Coley said, seven seconds is the delta. Can, you know, if, if, if your gap either leading or chasing, can you close that in the joker lap? Speaking of joker lap, going for that is that Larson, Robin yeah, Larson, I believe, is taking the Yokohama tire joker lap. Look at that, under that A-Shock energy gap. So he's going to keep it in close. This is much tighter than it was previously. Uh, loose. Coming around, watch for the Ericsons. You're looking for Ollie Ericsson and Martell have both edged him. So they've left that too late. Now he's alongside, though. Larson trying to pass Mark Connor Martell. Martell defending. There's a oh, crunch wow. of bodywork. Now he goes up the inside line, nudges him out wide. Larson with a good pass. That's the aggressive racing Larson that he needs to find if he wants to win this title. Now Martell goes down the split line. That didn't work yesterday. Can he make it work today? Love that. Absolutely love that. Look at that. That split lane there before that final turn. That's going to separate them, so don't go wheel to wheel. Great racecraft by Robin Larson. you got to love that. But, again, so look at that. Those diamonds next to those drivers. Kevin Erickson now goes towards that Yokohama tire choker lap. What was that? That looked like Robin Larson was maxing out his angle, almost caught some grip. Yesterday we saw him go into that tire. He can't make mistakes here today. You want to lock it up. Again, the winner, the fast pass. They're probably going to join us here in the booth so we can talk with them. Jared, we need to keep our eyes on Oli Erickson. He's just edged out. Everybody in wow. that joke had gone fastest lap. He's only 5.6 off the uh, rear bumper of Andreas Backward. So Andreas Backward looking like he's going to lose out here to Oli Erickson, the winner from Trois Rivières. Two, three rounds ago. Larson right on the back of Martel's here. Larson's uh, where's Kevin so far down? Yeah, what's a, what's the a time gap? What's the time difference between Backward and Erickson? What are we looking at? Here's the, here's the Yokohama Tire Joker predictor. It's saying Andreas is going to lose at 5.2 seconds. I I think maybe if he's more. tidy. Uh, let's look, look in the and background, watch for the jump. Where's Oli Erickson's oh, miles in front? He's got him by a lot, so oh. I think it's more like, I still think it's a, I think it's about seven, Jared. It was 5.8 when they went in. Look at the gap when they've come out. Wow. I still think it's about seven seconds. Yeah, so it's still holding on to seven seconds. Ollie Erickson with that fast lap. He's racing tidy. The track is drier. You can see the car sliding around. It's not gripping up. When you throw it into those big bank turns, it's not biting back. The, the, the car is allowing to slide. Here we go. Ollie Erickson looks like he's going for the checkered flag and the fast pass into the finals. Ollie Erickson holding it down. Big P with the checkered flag. Congrats. Oh, wait. Hold on. 
There is an up. Yeah. There is an update. Hold on. Ollie Erickson finished first to the naked eye. We are hearing something in regards to Erickson. I think it's Kevin Jarrett. So Kevin okay. Erickson. Kevin Erickson okay, is. Uh, I think he's a DNF. Okay. Larson though look, lost out to Martel again. He's ended up down in P4. So Larson's not going to be on the front row in the semi-final. Jarrett. He may, he went through in the semi yesterday. Two cars go through. Tough tough call. So it was Kevin Erickson over the radio that I heard. He was a DNF. Ollie Erickson gets the win. The fast pass to the front row. Andreas Backer, Connor Martel, Robin Larson, Kevin Erickson are going to the next semifinal. See if they can make the final. Beautiful day out here. What a what a great start. You see all the cars just lift off the start. The Ericsons, Jared, they were able to play the team card there. You know, they were both on the right hand side of the grid. So Ollie knew he could get right up onto the rear bumper immediately. But Ollie Erickson, he went Joker, didn't he, early on in the run. And then I think maybe, maybe Larson's team were caught sleeping because when they sent him to the Joker, it was too late. This was the little scrap between him and uh, Connor Martel. On board with Larson here. Listen to that, the amount of wheels that you get with a thousand horsepower on loose dirt, yeah, side by it. side. Now look, he goes to the inside line. This was a lovely aggressive move, but yeah, it's, it's uh, Oli Eriksson who goes through with a brilliant drive, looking really fast. Take a look at this backdrop here, Glen Helen Raceway. You know, I mean, it just day in the dirt, that Talladega turn, and here we are making history. Not once, not twice, not three, four times here this week, you know, just this season, right? We've been here before. Let's take a look. You can see that KB Forever livery, the snow camo on Travis Pastrana, 199. Who's going to get the fast pass into the finals? The Snowcap Mountains in the background, and we have some newcomers. Timo Scheider, who is a two-time DTM champion. I mean, he races extreme. He, he, first ever American race, or I should say race on American soil. He gets third place last night. Ollie Bennett on second row. Next to him, Fraser McConnell, who had the perfect event here earlier this season. And then a newcomer, Benito Guerra from Mexico. Look at this star-studded cast. Look at the countries. Let's go. Viva la Mexico, right? Let's go. See, let's see how he gets on. Pastrana on the front row was he top quality fire fastest in time practice he's picked to go in this one McConnell with a great start from row two straight up the inside of Timo Scheider wow, look at Scheider Travis. drops down to P3 Travis leading Bennett's got up into uh, P4 and at the minute it's Benito Guerra at the back of the pack McConnell's all over the back of uh, Pastrana here trying to find a way through but not yet Wow, the way Travis is initiating into this, it's a different Travis, right? Because he wanted to do this yesterday, but he knew he had to pedal it back. He doesn't turn the knob to 11, he turned down to seven, now he's back at it. Yeah, you remember he knocked a tire off the rim in the final, Jared, yep. it cost him, he could have won yesterday. He would love to win here. This is that one little dip on the way in. Scheider with a great showing yesterday. He was on the podium for the first time ever. Benito Guerra now going through the process. Scheider went through, which is learning how to wheel the FC1, a thousand horsepower. Through that long left hander, Pastrana now has a gap of 0.9. Nobody went Joker on the first lap, which is pretty unusual. I might have gone from the back of the pack, but join us here in the booth. Yesterday's winner, Andreas Backroot. The Backroot Blue. Your dad's getting your name tattooed on himself. No your mom got the hearts earlier. You didn't see that? No, no I didn't he see doesn't it. know. I don't oh, know. shoot. I just spoiled it. I heard Damn it here it. first. I heard it here first. <laughs> there we go. Jared Deanda with, with all the surprises. Oh, man. So, Joker lap. Ollie Bennett's gone into the Joker on this one. He's decided to slot himself out. It was only 3.6 seconds covering the whole field at that point. Andreas, what are the conditions like out there? Better than yesterday, it looks like? Better than yesterday. Today. It's still rough, uh, very hard, you know. I, I definitely felt in my heat that the championship is coming closer, you know. It's <laughs> the guys are, are going hard. How are you feeling after yesterday? Uh, still, uh, still. Uh, Look at the uh, grin. Like, you can't yeah. see it, you can only hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Snackaroot is live in full effect, yes. man. He's absolutely elated, right? Absolutely. No, I feel great. Just uh, lots of nerves in this race, you know, lots of like track conditions and stuff. How's the track, uh, how's the track changing? It is changing a lot, you know. It is rough, it's, it's raw, it's like hard, uh, but it's similar for everyone. The pace of everyone else is so similar. Pastrana's just gone fastest lap in this. He's edged a lead out of one. 1.8 seconds over everyone. Scheider went Joker and has slotted back in in P4, but at the minute he's 10.4 back. So, fair old gaps here. Travis is going really well. Is he risking it, Andreas, looking at it? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, Travis's style is
is always like flat out. The same with Fraser. So I mean, <laughs> I don't think he know how to to go to go safe. Yeah. To go safe. Yeah. It's like good gap. See that angle, Travis throws into turn one. It's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. He attitude, beats right? everyone every lap there with like three or four tenths. He's gone Joker. So Pastrana goes Joker on this final lap. Nobody's close enough to challenge him as long as he keeps this clean and tidy. Nice, nice Joker. He was 10.8 uh, seconds up on Timo Scheider. Absolutely flying here. Going to come up over the crest. Nobody there on the merge. Pastrana is killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, again, two newcomers here this weekend between Benito and Timo. I mean, you you, you look at him. It's the, the power of the O right here, right? So Timo getting third place yesterday. Hey, Travis yeah. bigged you up. Andreas, yeah. yesterday he was saying, I mean, between Andreas and and Frazier, they were the fastest guys. But here we go, one yeah. corner away from this checkered flag in the front row. Yeah, Pastrana coming up for the yeah, front with row the hands again. In the air. He got there <laughs> yesterday. Oh, uh, Timo has a uh, problem here. Oh, oh, Frazier, Frazier, Frazier as well. Frazier got Frazier. loose. Frazier McConnell, oh. Scheider going to get him at the line? No, no I don't think so. The, the line is irrelevant. Oh, he did. He Point did. four to Fraz has had a problem. Listen in, listen in. Look at that. Oh, uh, He's not happy. Same as yesterday for Fraz, but Pastrana takes, he's gone front row straight away yeah important to be on the front here it is i mean you can decide the race from there you know especially if we win the start <laughs> yeah that's more like it i mean travis was so fast yesterday he really deserved a good one this time so it is travis pastrana who wins heat number two he told me the other day, i said what do you got to do to win he said i've got to be the fastest in everything yeah. <laughs> win everything at the minute he's I doing mean, a pretty yeah. good job timo scheider p2 fraser mcconnell third ollie bennett and benito guerra If you look at Travis's lap times here, it's 47, uh, 462, 462, like, dude is some fire. Ollie Erickson was in the 46s on every lap as well, but I don't think 462s, but these are your front row. There you go, Ollie Erickson, Travis Pastrana, Andreas, join us here in the booth. Get some good insight on seeing how the track is changing, what's going on. Andreas has to go back in the semi-final. He obviously wants to get it done and then not force him to the LCQ. Who's gonna join? TP and Ollie Erickson. The guy with the target on the back is Robin Larson here. You're trying to secure the championship, but hey, you just said, what a day, and the day has just begun. What's been going on? Uh, yes, almost like yesterday. It's a little bit tricky from the qualification. Uh, couldn't pull it off uh, again. Uh, I think uh, on the time qualification, I just started pushing too early when the track wasn't as fast as we thought it was going to be. So. Yeah, we gave it away there, and now it felt good, but uh, I hit Connor on the pass, so something happened with the power steering, so I passed him, then I gave it back in the corner after, before the gap jump, I just almost lost it, because the wheel was just out of my hands, so close one again to get a spin and everything, but yeah, it's a bummer to everything I try with the lanes and everything on the dirt, track to develop so quickly and changes so quickly so I try different lanes to not get a punctures and but still pick up the speed but it, yeah turn out to be the not the good as the decision so we'll see you still have a long day ahead of you anything can happen in rallycross if that's one thing we know thank you Robin for your time Taking a look at the start here from this, we're talking about the grid of Group E Heat 2. Great start from all of them, but Travis Pastrana just putting on a clinic. You know, Fraser McConnell was front row. Unfortunately for Fra for Fraz, you know, had a little bit of tumultuousness there towards the end, but it was all TP equally. Yeah, amazing drive from him to do 46.2s. Late decision there on the joker, it looked like to me. Um, yeah, 46.2s, no way. Oli Erickson was in the 46s on every lap as well, Jared, except his joker on the previous one, but for me, Pastrana looking really good, so. Yeah, and, that, and, and sorry, and that's the turn that took off uh, tires yesterday, so, you know, keep in mind, track is transforming like Optimus Prime. Andreas, you're talking about the track transforming. What's going on? You got you got a grin on your face, but it's it's a little flat. Again, I, I was just saying, hey, you could smell it. You're yeah. in contention of a championship. Are you thinking championship? Again, we we're talking stats here with Katie and Coley. This weekend is 30% of the championship. Yeah. No, I mean, to be honest, when it comes to the championship, right. I, I just don't... Uh, I, I really don't understand the point score and stuff. <laughs> so, so I couldn't Just be more bothered. Nice. But uh, for me and myself, like, 
all I want is a good race weekend, you know. I, I focus on whatever's next, the start, to do the, the stuff that I can control uh, yep. myself. And uh, then, yeah, I mean, like, I'm happy if I'm up there on pace. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? That's great. But guess what? Who's already on the front row? Travis Pastrana is with Katie now. Travis, <laughs> Katie. Yeah, as you guys are talking about, this is a mathematician's dream this weekend. Travis, one of the things that Andreas was saying earlier, in that qualifying, you built his confidence because oh, no. he was close to you, and that meant he had some speed. How important is that speed on a weekend like this? Uh, speed is really important, but I tell you, every single person out there is so close. I mean, 0.01 hundredth of a second over Kevin Erickson for, uh, to qualify pole, but it, it matters. It's like a Scott Speed always told me last year. He's like, every single practice, every qualifier matters, and uh, I've been struggling with the starts and we figured out how to get off the line that time so hopefully we can keep that going. Gosh you're talking about everyone matters this is like 30 percent of the season in one weekend talking about it mattering. Well we needed all three wins and you know yesterday uh, Fraz and I were the two quickest out there at the beginning but um, Andreas figured out how to not you know how to keep the tires on the car and he started he's always the most sideways guy and he was really straightforward so taking a, a note out of his book trying to do a little bit more straightforward driving uh, felt absolutely amazing yesterday I mean passing for the lead had the flat like we were there <laughs> Uh, but today, really have to get out to hopefully a good start. And I tell you, this Vermont Sports Car team has done so much work. Even uh, you know Connor Martell, who's the slowest in qualifying, is has a chance of winning this race. Everyone's so close. But I need to get that Ken Block 43 forever car to the top of the podium one of these races. And this, I feel like today's the day. Ooh, that would be such a celebration. Thanks, Travis. Here is where we are at with Group E as we approach the semi-finals. From the heat races earlier on, Travis Pastrana went through to row one with Ollie Erickson. Erickson looking super quick. Pastrana came out and just edged his lap times a little bit. Coming up now, semi-finals. Two drivers will go through from each of those. The winners will go through to row two. The P2 drivers will go through to row three. And then, of course, the last chance qualifier. Four cars in that for the last two spots available in the final. There's our lineup for the first semi final. Fraser McConnell went and spoke to the team a moment ago. They said they think just a mistake from him coming onto the straight. He was under a little bit of pressure. Guerra in the background continuing, of course, to try and learn how to crack on with this FC1. Franz just making a little adjustment to the gloves there. Backroot on pole. Backroot was on the front row yesterday. Best he'll be able to do now is row two. He'd still be pleased with that. Norwegian winner and then of course Robin Larson here I'm just in the tent with Robin a minute ago and there is a lot of pressure in that tent at the minute he really is under pressure pressure is what's you know kind of culminating over the drivers keep in mind this is we're only one and a half way through this weekend right we had last night we have tonight and then tomorrow we'll get you home by dinner time we'll get you home by happy hour it's going down here at Glen Helen Fraz, Backrood, Larson, and Benito. You can kind of see the grin through Andreas Backrood's helmet. You know, his eyes kind of just getting a little more almond shaped, right? But he still knows that he's still in contention against his very own teammate who's just behind him. But Fraser McConnell, he knows he can get it done here at Glen Helen. He's done it before. And then Benito. Just, he's like, oh, I just don't want to mess up. I don't know what to do with my hands. You know, he's kind of Ricky Bobbying right now. So we'll see who comes out on top. Watch Larson then. Remember the championship leader coming here under pressure to get a good result. Backward yesterday's winner on the front row. McConnell who won here earlier on this year. Going to be tough, I think, for Guerra to get a look in Backer with a good start. McConnell turns into him immediately. Larson looking up the inside line, gets through on McConnell immediately. So Robin Larson now up behind his teammate Andreas Backward. Great for the RX cartel. They'll be hoping for a P1, P2, which will put them through. Oh, sideways for Backward. He's risking it a bit tidier for Larson. Larson wow. goes Joker immediately. That's a little bit risky. You're, you're judging on whether or not Benito's going to be quick on the handbrake on the way in. Tucks it in. He's going to flick it back the other way. Watch for the bar. Boy, oh, slightly early on the turning. So Larson's gone with an early joker strategy. We'll see if it plays out. You know, Larson, if he keeps it tidy, that could actually benefit him. But Andreas Backroad, you see how risky he is, as you said. Kind of going to that first corner. The track is loosening up. It's not grabbing you like it was yesterday. You know, the, you, you saw the teeth just digging. Look at the attitude of the vehicles. They're sliding around. 
ground. They're not gripping up. They're not hitting kind of that big clay dirt. But it's transforming throughout the weekend. Andreas Backard with that lead over Grace McConnell. You can see one almost just over one second. So the gap earlier, well, the delta earlier was seven seconds, but they've walked in the track. McConnell goes joking out. Might mean the joker's a little bit slower because at the minute, Larson's 8.3 back. McConnell will give us a better idea of what's going on. Watch for Larson coming up. Watch for McConnell coming out in the merge now. Larson's going to enter stage left any minute, and he's there. He's in front of McConnell. Wow. So tidily done. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit longer, the joker, I think, at the minute. Maybe a bit more slippery in there. Yeah. All right, so Andreas backwards still up front, and you can see that stop watch next to his name that denotes that he does have the fastest lap so far on that so back route Benito look he slides into second keep in mind he has not hit that Yokohama tire joker lap so he will be set back there lap three of four joker predictor they're saying that Andreas will hold on to it he will retain first place a little hiccup like that that's not going to favor him yeah, interesting. They're saying 7.7. .7. That'll be live data from timing. So that's uh, we're right. It's about seven tenths slower than it was previously. You can see Guerrero in full send mode. Mexican driver coming up uh, over, following on the drone, looking back. Ah, someone's Whoa. bailed on the gap. Someone's bailed on the top of the gap. Who's that? It's McConnell. Oh, no. McConnell's had to stop on the up ramp. You can't hit it if you don't think you'll make it. He has the option now, Jared, to go through the Joker again. But game over. McConnell's going to go Huge into the LCQ. Setback. Huge setback for the Jamaican driver who had the perfect event earlier this season. The white flag is out. Is this a mercy flag? Is the white flag out saying, hey, we surrender, Andreas? Or is Robin Larson going to fight back? What are we looking at, Coley? I'm checking the gaps now. We're waiting for Larson to cross over the loop at the start. Finish line 8.5. Backward's got enough for me, uh, so he's just got to keep this tight. Andreas. Andre and then keep in mind, we're taking the top two. Right, so you yes. just want to be in the top two. But you want to be that row up, Jared. You know, sticking yourself one row forward gives you such a better chance True. for a good result. Backward slots in, look, Larson's there as well. It's a good result for the cartel. They're both going to go through. I mean, True. Larson will be relieved at that. If he keeps making the final and keeps getting okay results, that's good. But yesterday he made the final, he ended up P8. You know, he's got to do better than that today. Let's just call it a little bit of an upset here for Fraz to go to the LCQ. I mean, again, from 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 hero to zero. Not calling names. I just spades a spade. He he knew he knows his track, and unfortunately. Did it get it done? Backer are going to take this one. He goes through the P1. Larson slots in in P2. So yeah, both the Irish cartel cars go through. I don't know what was on the radio there. Something. Thank you, guys. Very <laughs> so, good car. Thank you. Okay, Backer is saying very good car. Thank you. So he's happy with the settings on his FC1. And that was something one of the teams said to me earlier today. With the change in the track conditions, they're having to dial it in to try and find the grip that they're looking for out there today. Uh, we have some great fans here in the building, and look at that. The horns are up. Andreas Backerud, he is here in the booth. Andreas Backerud gets the win. Robin Larson, so the DRRJC, let's call it the RX Cartel. They're out for business. They're in the finals. All right, so join us here in the it, yeah. booth is Travis Pastrana. Travis, you're on that front row. You got the win, dominant fashion. Taking a look at the track, looking at your competitors here. What comes to mind? Backer it into that left hand up. Oh, hey, there I'm we, here we go. Back. Yeah, no, back it's, the, the track is getting smoother and smoother. The more aggressive is going to work better and better. Um, honestly, I thought Fraz was, I mean, he's been fastest all weekend in the, the opening qualifiers. Um, it looks like something might have gone wrong with that car. He got a flat tire again. I was jumping it with a flat yesterday. I don't know what Fraz just should have just pinned it, man. It works. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Some great insight. Travis, don't go anywhere. We're taking a look at this, you know, again, who you're going to be going against. You and Ollie are on that front row. It's critical to get in there. So, again, I love that the track is transforming it's trying out it's it's uh, it's equated to more aggressive driving let's see how it unfolds all right, so Travis. Me too. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. <laughs> I, I, again, just how it's transforming from, I mean, shoot, let's talk about it from Thursday to today. and then Th going Thursday it was a tomorrow. river. There was no track here at all. Dude. So, um, no, hats off to the track crew for sure. That, yeah. uh, they've done an amazing job. And, you know, it just has some holes. And you can't really see them. Everything, you know, they're trying to cover everything up, but it's spongy. So when these tires dig in, I mean, these electric cars, they have so much horsepower and so much suspension that we're allowed a little bit more weight to kind of make them tougher. So we can kind of bump into each other. But look at this first turn. Um, yeah, it's just been, everybody is so close. Absolutely amazing. Uh, they came out, the Ericsons were right on it with yeah. the heat one. Uh, really played it well. Kevin, uh, really, really fast in the time qualifying. I really thought he had something for Oliver, but unfortunately had that front flat. Um, so there's still gotchas on that track. But at the same gotcha. time, someone's going to make it.
Yeah. Another look at the next start here. This These are our five car starts from the heat race. That guy in that camel car, he's, he's a real piece okay. of work. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Block forever, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, man. We need to get that car to the top of the podium. This is yeah. the uh, last uh, triple header to do it. But, man, we're... Uh, Top qualifier here, uh, going into the main pole again. And like you see, I'm, I'm setting it in. I know uh, Backroot and a lot of these guys have championships you can think of. Yesterday, passing in the lead, sent it a little too deep, but I, I'm going to keep setting it. The crowd Please wants do. to see it sent, and we're going to have some fun. Absolutely, and, and, and they, they don't expect anything less. And nor do your competitors. They know that who they're going against, they need to kind of bring it. So they, you know. I, I gave Larson an inch at the last round and uh, time we were here, and he took it all, so I, 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 <laughs> I took that inch back took this time. Back. Yep. And he's, you know, I tell you, these guys are all such great competitors. And, you know, everyone kind of knows how everyone races. And that's what Nitro Rallycross is supposed to be. So, yep. you know, final weekend, we say, hey, look, uh, talking to the, the staff and all the, the guys that have scrutineering said, let's, uh, you know, let's do our best to let this racing race. So long as no cars get broken, let's make it happen. Love it. The fans are loving it as well. It's a beautiful Saturday out here at Glen Helen, this iconic track. I mean, Travis, you're out here testing with two wheels. How important is Glen Helen to motorsports? Oh, Glen Helen is the hub for motorsports. I mean, you got the Inland Empire out there. You got right. all the off-road. I mean, Metal Militia was born, like, right down the freeway, right? right? And, yeah, but, then, but then day in the dirt. No, right. I, there, there's so much out here, and it's cool. You see the crowd, and dude, there's so many of the Nitro Circus guys out here, and a lot of them are uh, riding for the, the freestyle show. And you got pit bikes in the back. I mean, you got Volkswagen Bugs, Class 10. I mean, this is, this is the Van Prix tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> biggest, biggest crowd we've had here as well at yeah. Glen Helen. No, great. Uh, KT is with Fraser McConnell, who's not having the best day. That's exactly right. And actually, when Fraser moved uh, the car in here, you slammed the door and you got out. A very disappointing stop on the jump. What happened? Uh, we landed on in the drive shaft broke, and we also got a puncture. So not much we can do. I'm just going to have to get the car prepared and ready to go for LCQ. As it relates to the LCQ, what's going to be the challenge? Because at this point, you got to get in that final. Yeah, I need to get in the final. And, um, you know, the team is going to do what they can to get the car ready. You know, Dry Rainbow, JC, they're the best in the business. So, um, you know, it'll be ready to go by then. If there's anybody who's going to be ready, I do believe, guys, it's going to be Fraser McConnell. Aggression uh, there. Yeah, you can just feel it. Frustrated. And yeah, I mean, obviously, rightfully so. Just, you know, uh, equipment. And I will tell you, and Travis, maybe you can attest to this, going to Lydon Hill, I know Coley and I, we're in the booth, you're on the track. We're kind of like, ooh, kind of biting our fingernails. How is this FC1X going to handle? You know, absolutely amazing. Coming into this championship, having no idea what the car was going to be like. Um, you know, a lot of speculation on electric. Is it going to be faster? Is it going to be better? Is it going to break? I mean, uh, they did such an amazing job. And honestly, hands, hats off to the Ericsons as yep. well. Um, you know, Kelvin and Oliver, they did such a great job getting that car to be the best rallycross car in the world. Best wow. handling, best suspension, most durable. But, you know, Fraz rides that thing pretty hard. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about Racer Champions, actually, because, of course, you were up there with a bunch of drivers who don't normally drive the FC1X who got the chance to. What was their feedback like? I've never seen so many grown men giggle when they got out of a car. <laughs> they were like, this is awesome. And it was tearing up the snow more than the other cars. Yeah. So some of the, the, the um, you know, F1 drivers are like, oh, maybe we shouldn't run. All the Rallycross guys are like, no, we we're are running, running this car. Yeah. It's so much fun. And, man, look how good the competition is. We had 0 .01 hundredths of a second uh, qualifying difference between first and second. Yep. There were four of us within a tenth of a second. Like, that is unheard that's of. Great. More this, power than we can do. That's your onboard there, Travis, on the right. The, the rear look from the, from the heat race, apparently. So you got a good gap. You built, I think, a 1.8 gap. Lap times were strong, 46.2s you were running. We uh, had our first three laps were all within, uh, you know, two tenths of each other. So uh, I feel like I'm consistent. I feel like we're smooth. I know our team has done such a great job with that, uh, you know, Vermont sports car, black rifle uh, vehicle. It's We can get out there. I... I I'm starting pole. If I just don't blow the start, I mean, even yesterday, I felt like we were doing well, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that I pushed hard enough to, to completely clear uh, <laughs> back route, and uh, I backed it in too deep. So, what you know, I was going to say, learn. you're so strong on the dirt. Just that little piece of pavement is where you struggle, and, <laughs> and that's no, the start it's grip. It's honest, yeah. <laughs> that's a, like, uh, I mean, I remember going back to the finals of last year, you know, I mean, here's you and Scott Speed going for it in supercars, and here we are now. You know, we'd love to see Scott, and I know you got his advice on, on how to race in the ass because you and Connor are so similar. It's been a great season. And, and here we are to end, you know, at Glen Helen, this iconic track, kind of segueing into that uh, as we were earlier. 
here we are. It's 30% of the championship. You yeah, know, this, three rounds of 10. So much. I mean, still two rounds left. So much Before to happen. Happy. And this track, I mean, with all the rain, if you drive as aggressively as you can, you have to take those risks and you have to be there because everyone's so quick. But Connor Martell and I had the two fastest lap times of the day. And Connor qualified last. <laughs> qualified first. You know, it's everybody is yeah. right there. I think Connor and I, uh, Connor's a great chance of getting up there and uh, getting on this podium, too, to be some upsetters. They're working on Larson's car again. So... Well, he's gone through, Larson. but there's obviously a, maybe there, another little issue. He had problems earlier on, didn't he? Now, Larson's, his starts have been the best of anybody. He's been shooting out of there, just little things. I mean, I, I messed him up yesterday for sure. Um, got in an aggressive pass and then kind of got stuck going through the corner where he tried to avoid me and ended up into the, the tire wall on the inside. Right. So, so much can go wrong. And Larson's got the toughest job because on a track that so much can happen, he's got to protect that lead. Everybody else was out there to send it and he's trying to protect it, but everybody is so close. You like protect, it's like, if you protect, you're going backwards. It's like Braveheart. He's like, hold, hold, and then everybody's just attacking, attacking, attacking. He's just trying to mildly take the lead. You, you've been in that situation before. You know Championship Weekend when the, when the pressure's really on. I just feel like it's ramping up for Robin. Like He's gone a bit quiet in, in the garage, just wandering about, doesn't want to talk to too many people. I get that, but what's it like? Well, I came in with a. I had the easiest job. I had to win everything, and you know, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking more. So of I, maybe I blew last the tire year. No, but like, so at the end of the day, um, being in the championship hunt, Larson this year has proved that he not only is the most consistent, um, but he does exactly what he needs to do to get the points that he needs. And I think yesterday was, you know, it was a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of just wrong place, wrong time. But look, if you look at a. Uh, He's just, I mean, he's in all of this dirt. It is so hard to see, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, at night. You yep. can yeah. see a lot from the top, but when you're down there, when you see the in-car views, you don't see anything. It's amazing that there's not more carnage on that first lap. And again, he's starting, you know, third row this today. And there's just so much that can happen. So many people that are really wanting to get, you know, my teammate wants to get that first win. I want to get that win. And then you got people that are trying to battle for the championship that need to get there. And you got Larson who is trying to avoid all of the carnage, you know? Yeah, totally. You were top yeah. qualified today, weren't you, I think? Thanks, buddy. Yeah, so hey. just yeah, a little mention in there. <laughs> Now, is it, how, then, how many views? Mean, he's happily rare, married, dude. No, relax. Look, that's, <laughs> that's a Ooh, rare mistake for yeah. Larson right there, and I think it's him. So you come into these corners, and you don't want the car to be sideways because you might flat. But if you go straight, a lot of times you start pushing. So yeah. you jump on the throttle, and it's a 1,000 horsepower. We came into the series with no one having any right. experience with this much power. I don't care what you drive. If you didn't drive a top fuel dragster coming into this year, <laughs> it's got <laughs> more power than you're used to. All right, all right, all right. I, I know what you're saying here. Now, obviously, there is so much horsepower. There's so much on deck there's technology it's the unknown the future is now and it's going down the fc one x nitro rally cross the triple header remember don't go anywhere travis he's excited look at that grin he's on the front row for the finals i'm talking totally. to you guys that i'm not yeah, mr mega you. send it All right, so taking a look at this, we are looking at our supercar. This is the LCQ. This is the last chance qualifier. Who is going to be in it? No, semifinal two. Sorry, semifinal two. So two of these vehicles are going to LCQ. Excuse me, got ahead of myself here. Who are we looking at, Coley? Who's on the front row? Who's on we're, second we're row? We're looking at Martel pulling some dance moves in there. Charity <laughs> swinging. He's getting himself all fired up. I got off to a great start on the last one, and he's going to switch everything that he's done to copy this and he is so nervous because there's so much that can go wrong and you don't want to ever try something during a race especially not when you're on the front row when this matters so much he wins this heat he's second row you give him, do you give him some point. feedback did they take some settings off your car or no I, you know i'm so bad at pavement that my uh, the engineer <laughs> zodos was like do yeah, worry. this <laughs> and uh, and it works so we'll see if connor uh, tries that and we'll see how well it works for him so the fans are filling up here. You can see the focus of Kevin Erickson. I was just talking to his I, that's, pops. That's frustration right there. Kevin's been the quickest so many times, but he is full send. So he's like, I don't understand why he's not holding together. But all these other guys are trying to keep the car perfectly in line. Kevin has can be quick. All these guys can be quick. And Timo, Dude, look Timo. at that man. Timo yesterday, Podium. Chris Meek hurts his back. 
and then he says, here's the keys, and he gets podium on his first debut. Timo was so stoked yesterday. We saw him before the podium. I don't think I've ever seen him look happy, and I've seen him win some stuff. So Timo Scheider is on the pole position. Two Connor Martel. DTM champion. Yeah, I mean, he is. Uh, yeah. Rally, experienced NBD. rallycross driver extreme. He knows how to do rallycross. He knows how to drive electric cars. Travis's teammate Connor Martel on the front row as well. Row two, Ollie Bennett and Kevin Erickson. Here we go. We are ready to send it. NRTRO, let's go. We'll spell it out for you. And let's see if Connor Martel maybe learned a little something from his Vermont sports car teammate, Travis Pastrano, who's here in the booth with us. Let's lick the stamp and send it. There we go. See what kind of start here. Whoa. You can see Martel kind of spinning his Yokohama tires. As you can see, Timo gets the lead. Oh, look at Kevin from the Erickson. second row. Erickson this jumps up. Wild. There's that frustration. Yeah, Kevin's going around the outside. That's not a great. Oh, he's going to be in the wall for sure. Epic start by Kevin Erickson. He oh snuck up God. the inside in turn zero, we've been calling it. Now he goes straight to the joke lap. So Kevin Erickson had an absolutely brilliant start, and he's ended up bailing to the joke no, just that, the way it worked great, out. Yeah, at the end of the day, Kevin knows that he can run these fast laps. If he doesn't get a flat, if he can keep sending it, now he doesn't have to deal with anybody else, and the other three are going to be bumper car in this next lap. Yeah, so I, think yeah. Kevin, I think Kevin got forced kind of into that position, but it might actually work out yes, for his benefit. Because yeah. you saw how fast he actually exited. He kind of pulled the exit strategy and went right. Jared, as long as you're the first person into the joke, you're all in, good. Oh, so yeah, no. he might not have wanted to go lap one. Martel looks like he's got a problem straight oh, on. Martel's parked at the man. side of the road. So he's going to be going to the last chance qualifier with down to three. so quick all season long and just, just one instant after the next. I feel so bad for him. Timo Scheider might be going through to row two here again. He had amazing Amazing result yesterday. He's clearly looking for more. He's absolutely loving the uh, the gap jump. Did you see all his Insta stories? He was going on about the gap jump. He's going. I did the first gap jump. Oh my god, the feeling was amazing. He yeah. was so it, buzzed up on it. This is a perfect race for him to come in. Even though he's, you know, he does everything obviously, but definitely a pavement background specialist. Yeah. He drives it very tidy, very smooth. And when everyone else makes mistakes and gets punctures and gets <laughs> sideways into these holes, he is just consistently. And he had the fastest time in the main event yesterday. Would you equate that to, as you talk about asphalt, maybe respecting the equipment and not challenging it? He's just happy to be out there. He's pumped to be going over the jump, and he's not taking anything more than what the track's giving him, what the other drivers are giving him. And when everyone else, when all of us crash each other out, he's just right there in the hot. He's super smart. Down, he, does, he does need to get a bit of a wiggle on. Sorry to interrupt. The gaps come down from 7.6 to 0.4 to oh 0.1, boy. just to 7.0. So Kevin Erickson in the orange colored old Berg's machine is out there hunting down Timo Scheider at the front. Can he get it done? Keep in mind that you just want to be the top two, but the second row is ideal. Second right? row is so much better. Behind you and with the, with behind you and Ollie. Yeah. And I tell you what, Kevin and Ollie have worked really, really well on the starts together. They've done a great job kind of, you know, being teammates. It's been uh, super helpful. All right, we got the yellow caution out there, and I think I believe that's for Martel. You can see him parked there on uh, on turn zero. So here's the Joker protector. Seven, seven. He got more Ooh, time. Oh, look at this! They're saying he's gonna lose it. Kevin Erickson, the way he's driving, the prowess. It's he gonna has be more close. seat time than anybody in the SC1X. So watch this. So take that left 90. Let's see if we see Kevin Erickson. At what point do we see him taking that A shock energy jump? Timo lost a little time getting into the Joker. Oh, there he is. No. Hey, just be top two. He responded too uh, late. He, he held the gap. He was coming down by two tenths a sector, and then when he responded on the last lap, he kept it pegged at 7.0. He needed oh, to know a lap earlier. So much still for conservative. <laughs> still trying to find a way through. Dude. Scheider takes the right-hand line here, trying to get a better exit onto this the straight. Line was, oh, this line was boy. better on the right, but you got to cross. The, no, it's just, too much. Yeah, it's just really hard to cross over the fluff there. Kevin Erickson going to gonna get it, going to come up and uh, take the checker flag. So he will be row two. Shire goes through to row three. Ollie Bennett and Conor Martel to the last chance okay. qualifier. I've got a Kevin Erickson. Uh, you could have told me differently. I thought we had been like super safe uh, in the beginning. It said like you're clear, clear, clear. It said like, oh, easy. So I didn't take any risk there. That was a risk for sure. I think he so, was saying he yeah, wanted something no. different from his spotter. Uh, yeah, so basically the spotter said, you're fine, you're fine. And then he got in there and he's like, I was not fine. I could have kept pushing. <laughs> this like, was not okay. This, this was not okay. <laughs> Next time we're close, tell me to keep going hard. Because <laughs> there's a big, there's a probably a second a lap or a half second a lap difference between risking the tires and not risking the tires. Yeah. And everyone can kind of take those chances, but you don't want to take more chances than you have to. So when his yeah. spotter says you're good and he backs it down, that almost gets passed by Timo. That's, that's uh, 
That's tough. This is the biggest crowd we've seen at Glen Helen ever in the events we've had. Here. And that return lane, I love it. When the drivers return in front of the, yeah. the crowd, it's look, a nice one. they're on their feet. It's just fantastic. The kids waving to him. I, I love it. It's brilliant. What a great venue. Ah, the, the pit bikes, it just, I mean, there's uh, Glen Helen, there's motocross going on. I smelled two stroke this morning. I was yeah. like, this is good. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I love the smell two stroke in the morning. Kevin Harrison gets the win. Timo Scheider, he got second and third row. Ollie Bennett, Connor Martell, Travis's teammate, they got to go to the LCQ. That is the last chance qualifier. After that, guess what? If you don't make it, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Travis, for joining us. Timo Scheider off the line. Look, watch the start here for Kevin Erickson. Straight up the inside of Martell. He nearly got at the inside of Scheider as well, but he couldn't quite make it work. And then Martell turns in and something fails, and he just ends up having to go straight on. It looked like it was all going to be Timo Scheider from then on. There's another look at Connor with the little issue. But he didn't realize he was being hunted down and from behind by Kevin Erickson. This is turn one, look at Ericsson. This is where he said he wanted more from the spot. He really did flirt with the wall on the uh, way into the Joker. At the merge, Scheider was right there. But he couldn't do anything to get past. Kevin Ericsson with a brilliant drive there. Goes through to row two. Can he get a win from there? Look at this crowd here. Glen Helen, the backdrop. That's not Hollywood, that's Glen Helen, baby. We're out here in the Inland Empire. Ollie Harrison, Travis and Strong in the front row. And most recently, you saw Kevin Erickson and Timo Scheider, and then Backroot and Larson. So again, only two more spots, four drivers. What two drivers are gonna join them? Guess what? Katie, what's cracking? The Robin Larson team just came out of the front there. They're working on a drive, sh the steering column, in fact. You guys are saying Robin's consistent. Well, they got to make sure the car is in good shape for that. Of course, on the other end of the spectrum, there's a little honk to go a long, a long way. Andrea said that that semi win, it was really good. Uh, it was a really good run for him. He said that, you know, guys, one of the things that you have to be really careful about is the fact that when you're out there, you can't see the idea of making sure that you don't overrun the track. And another thing that he mentioned that I thought was really interesting is to save your energy because as we're seeing those last couple of laps, there's really a lot of action that's happening. So he want, does want to make sure that he's ready and prepped and doesn't exert himself too early in the race. Championship, Katie, what, what, are, what are the drivers saying? Robin, Andreas, <laughs> you know, even, I mean, that's not in the lot. back of their mind. <laughs> not a lot. Was when I was in there, nobody was saying anything. Yeah. Is, it, is it still like that? Well, you know, it's a really good point. Robin Larson yesterday, I even told you guys, he was in such a good mood, and there was a lot of joyfulness around him. Today, a lot more stoic. Coley, you and I were saying, it's a bit of nerves, right? These guys are focusing on the championship. It's a mathematician's dream, as we're saying, but really, there is a chance for it to be taken away from Robin this weekend. So, of course, there's a little bit of a concern there. Meanwhile, Andreas Backroot, on the other hand, he's joyful, but I wouldn't say that he's not nervous at all. He told you guys that as well. Yeah. Mathematician's dream. If only there was a mathematician in the announcing booth, we'd no. be all right, Jared. But no. if there's anyone in the crowd who can do fast maths, come and join us. Yeah, You're welcome. But, but you, I, I, let's just call it what it is, Katie. You know this. You know, being an announcer and presenter, the announcer's curse. Right before we went live <laughs> yesterday. Coley says, you know, hey, you know, this is pretty much Robin's thing. It's pretty much ah. wrapped up. You know, all these things. And he gets his worst finish of the season, Robin ah. does. So this is the elephant in the room. This is the big, now deemed the Ken Block Trophy, the championship trophy up for grabs. You can't count out anybody at this point. I mean, obviously, mathematically, you can. Like, right. Connor Martell's out. Also. <laughs> but we talk, we talk about these things, and we sensationalize it. But at the end of the day, you need to see that checkered flag. Well, to be to add to that point, of course, Fraser McConnell getting out of his car, slamming the door, making sure that people knew that he wanted that car fixed, he wanted it ready, and he needed to be in that main coming out of that LCQ. He's not necessarily pushing there for the top place, but there is that slim chance that anyone feels that they can get the job done. It can be their championship. And hey, that's that little fire that these drivers need to make sure they get it done.
Yeah. And, of course, thank you so much, Katie. Thank you for some great, <laughs> great insight there. Again, your feet are doing a lot of work as we just stand up here and look pretty. I mean, <laughs> uh, we got we got the fans back here. Look at this. we got fans of all ages. Yeah, wave, wave to the crowd there. There we are. We're live from Glen Helen. That's right. Thank you, guys and gals. we got some adult beverages. We've got some A-Shock energy. And, of course, we got gel blaster guns out there. we got some Dixon flannels on. we got Class 11. we got side-by-side. -side. We got next cars. we got Nitro Circus jumps. we got Micah. we got Jimmy Coleman. Street Bike Tommy. What's Street Bike Tommy been up to, man? He's just smoking some meats over there with Michael Mixon. I don't know. Do you know who Michael Mixon is? I don't. Okay. Michael Mixon, he is a pit master. Do you know what ah, that is? Ah, yes. Okay. The Smoke some thing. meats, yeah, baby. Man. That's what Street Bike Tommy's doing. So, again, Tommy's over there smoking some meats. So, next up is the LCQ. We're talking NRX next. Literally next, and they are the next cars. So, taking a look here as NRX next and our grid getting set up. And unfortunately, we are not seeing Simon Olufsen. Simon Olufsen is a DNS, did not start. I've just had a text from Sandra Holgan, who runs the team. He's lost power and then spun in the hairpin. Ah. The engine has given up. So they may have an engine. They may be able to change that overnight, but it's game over Tomorrow. for today. Yeah, today, today, that is a wash. So no Simon Olufsen. You can see there he's grayed out. But on that front row, Lane Vakela, Tommy Hallman, and then on that back row, the number 99, Eric Gordon flying the red, white, and blue. See what kind of starts we get here from these NRX next cars. We talk about it, but it bears repeating. Four cylinder, 400 horsepower. Uh, yeah, about 300, 300-ish. 300 300 so horsepower. they were about half of a traditional yeah. supercar. So the old supercars were the IC supercars were about 600 horsepower. These are more 300s. A sequential gearbox, all-wheel drive. They're great piece of kit. Brilliant start by Hamlet on the inside lane. He's going to edge Vakela immediately. Or the Vakela's trying to hold on around the outside line, but Hamlet's going to shut the door. So slides across just to uh, to close that gap. They've got right. a little gap on Eric Gordon already. So Gordon's got now. Gordon's just gone steady over those first couple of jumps. So different line here. Then turn one looks a lot longer. Eric Gordon goes Joker immediately. That's actually going to open up the strategy for these two in straight away. So if a slower car hasn't gone Joker, you don't want to go because you can end up getting in traffic with them. But Eric Gordon gone. Now if Michaela wants to, he can go on the very next lap. All right, so Hallman out front. We got three laps to LCQ. This is all thriller, no filler. As Liza Marco looks on and scratching her pen here. And Hallman, you can see Gordon taking that Yokohama tire Joker lap. But Hallman and Michaela fight for that top spot. Let's see who keeps it clean. I reckon Michaela might go on this next lap. He's doing well here to go with Hellman. Hellman is absolutely a, cl a class act. Lane Michaela with a bit of confidence, I think, from Calgary. Michaela jumps to the inside. Don't lose time there. Keep it out wide and then get a good exit. And it, I think here, Jared, make an early decision to go Joker. So point it in the Joker now. Get on the throttle and go. And that's exactly what he does. <laughs> so that is Get out of his hand. Yeah, you see oh, that. Cool. He's looking at your crystal Mate, I've ball. I've already said, when, when this is game over, I'm going to be a spotter. You know, uh, I've watched yeah. a lot of rally cross. Yeah, no, you... you you are the voice of Rallycross. It's a pleasure to work beside you. Thank you, Mr. Mega. Great time. Thank you. Vakela sitting in second now with that Joker lap under his belt. So Hallman just now he needs to continue to be faster. But what's at stake here? It's LCQ. People get knocked out. Grid positions basically to get there into the final. So it's where you're going to line up in the final. Hallman would have wanted to go through earlier than this, but I say uh, there was a bit of a surprise from Henderson in the previous race. It got great pace. He came out in the merge, and that just put everybody into a bit of a melee and he ran wide and, and lost a few positions so uh, they are saying at the minute that Hellman will lose first to Michaela but will sell Michaela's only 5.6 back so Michaela's yeah keep in that tidy, case I, th yeah, I think 5.6 is, is, uh, is not enough time Lane Michaela's got a, a very highly touted driver as a year Buddy Rice Indy 500 winner you know open wheel racer uh, just a, an absolute talent an absolute weapon so Hellman is he going to hold on yeah, to it yeah he's there so 5.6 our predictor's wrong, I'm afraid. So the uh, predictor's gone. That's well, one of the right things there, though. the track develops, Jared. We yeah. know that. As it dries out or gets damp, the grip levels are different. He does oh, have a look up. He's oh. broken it. He's broken Holy the front cow, right suspension. Front right. So he's, he's broken that. He's gone in with steering lock in onto a bump, unfortunately, and for Michaela there. Uh. He's got a punch. He'll drag that round to the finish line. But Tommy Howman coming onto the front straight now for Team Farron. Finished driver, likeable young lad. He really is looking to get up into the Group E cars as soon as he possibly can. He's got all the talent he needs for it and trying to prove that here this weekend. Ah, the Kayla's stopped, Jared. Thought he might make it round and, and be able to get onto the start, finish straight, but uh, not going to be able to. So Eric Gordon going to get P2. Wow. 
terrible, terrible bad luck there for Lane Vakela. You saw him, just as we were speaking, you saw him just hit the whoop or just hit that rut and just absolutely lose his tire. It turned in and... I mean, I don't, I don't think it was just a tire. I think it was suspension as well. Yeah, Alma gets a win. Gordon Vakela in third. So there is our NRX next LCQ World Final. We've seen the European Championship. We've seen the American. And this is the World, 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 World Final. Ah, we got the Anaheim Duck mascot in the building. You know what? Put, uh, put, put, put my tab on his bill. Can we do that? Put, put it on his bill. Yeah. All right. Oh, dude, get that dirt up your shelf off. Yeah. Uh, yes, was it? Lar Larson, Larson and Fraz went to a Ducks yeah, game. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they went. Yeah, to Yeah, they had game. a blast. Yeah. They got they got jerseys, dude. What? What? We didn't get called. Oh no, oh no. I know. I, you know, you live here. Yeah. yeah. I could have come in on the way. Coley and Dieta. You no, know, I know. Come oh, on, that man. Would have been I'll take I'll take them on. Put, dude. I don't even know how to skate. TP's up at the VIP, hanging out with the little ones. So good. The electricity here, literally and figuratively, of the cars and the people is absolutely awesome. Some Nitro Rallycross delivering on all fronts. Coley, uh, again, just a great event here. I woke up, just the, the, the weather was beautiful. It's getting a little cold, a little overcast right now, but nice. This is just tepid weather as uh, Travis signing some autographs for the kids. Yeah, it's definitely kids of all uh, ages. Ho hoodies, <laughs> hoodies and jackets going on in a minute for me. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's You're getting, soft, getting chilly. You're soft. Yeah, there is that. There yeah. is that. There is that. <laughs> but it's great to see so many people having a good time. Uh, just, uh, you know, a uh, shout out for Travis. To be fair, all our drivers are pretty good, but Travis puts in so much time for the fans. He really does. Um, you know, he's ne never, never, uh, never no photos. Yeah, he's a good lad. Hey, FYI, uh, you came up here and there was a fan, Brian. He actually works for Timing. He handed me this and he says that we need more of this. You, you don't get the skit. No, it's not. You have no, you have no idea. Take. We need more cowbell. Oh, with cowbells. You have cowbells. You know, you, you've never the seen the Will Ferrell this. skit. No, I don't think Blue so. Blue Oyster Cult. We need more cowbell. No? You got nothing. Oh, no, I mean, I got nothing. Oh, jeez. See, these, these just, you know, throw a Monty Python joke at him, he'll get it oh, every yeah, time. I'm all over it. Yeah, all Funny over walks, but... you know? <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. All right, I'll bite your ankles. I'll bite your ankles. There we go. Look at fans hyped up over here, grabbing some heat wave glasses, grabbing some goods. Look at, I don't know what that dance is, uh, but like this it. is like it's TikTok. Okay, it's, the, the it's called the tip and sip. That's what it is. It's the tip, tip, and sip. Ooh. All right, so we're cleaning up Lane Bakela's vehicle there. Clean up on aisle one. We're going to pull lane off. What do you got? So dragging that on backwards, Jared. Nice. That's the only way to get that on there. And then uh, they'll bring it back to the paddock. See if they can get it fixed in time. Drop it like it's hot. He will be on the back row of the final. But they haven't got long. I'm just looking to see when they're back out. 20 past seven. So they've got they've got only an hour to get that car back and get it fixed. So problems for Lane Bacala. Taking a look at just all the, uh, we got side-by-sides next. Yeah, side-by-side -side LCQ. And followed class, by the, 11. The class 11. You the love class 11. Yeah, man, the, the Bar Hub Eagles will be out there uh, going nuts, which is cool. And then, yeah, the LCQ for Group E. All right, taking a look at that snow camel livery. Shout out to Ken Block. Again, RIP KB forever. Beautiful car. As Travis said, want to get that thing on the podium. But uh, again, we're up here in the booth. We're talking some smack. But a man of the people, he's smoking meats. He's putting smiles on faces. He's, he's doing it all. Tommy. Tommy is just a man of the people. Tommy, where are you at? Glenn Helen, we're back again, except this is a championship weekend. Things are going to get decided. People are going to be going door to door, putting everything out there with the race. These lot, this fans have showed up for over an hour now. These gates have been open for over an hour. There's a ton of people showing up. They're still pouring in. We got some great fans out here. They seem to be action sports fans. We got this, this little guy here. He's killing it on his biking line. You know, he's, he's, he's keeping it going. Let's see some stunts. Yeah. Oh, look at him go. Look at him. He's he he he's he's a lot like myself. Yeah, he's got fans. He's got fans already, bro. Look at him go. <laughs> Dude, he's got style. Look at that. How old is he? He's five years old. Five years old. My man's out here killing it. Just hanging out in line, putting on a show for the people. Yeah, buddy, get it. We're gonna keep having fun out here. And uh, when they come inside, they can come see my tailgate, get some good food, and watch some really great racing. Back to you guys. 
A-Shock, a modern performance energy drink created for today's active generation. Yokohama Tire, make every drive a performance. Insta 360, think bold. Fantastic crowd here at Glen Helen. Plenty of more action still to come. As we say, we've got a side-by-side -side LCQ coming up next. Then the Class 11 final, Group E LCQ. And then finals for all of our categories to round out the day as well. There is the Gel Blaster backed side-by-side -side of Ben Meyer. Ben is on the pole with Amanda Sorensen alongside. Sorensen was unlucky, I think, in that last encounter. Could definitely have taken P2, but just at the merge, everybody was there. And when the traffic gets a bit heavy like that, you can end up losing a few places. And she did lose out on that last lap. Sarah Price and Leticia Buffoni on the back row. Leticia, if you're not aware, is an amazing skateboarder. And uh, what did she do? Was it a kickflip out of the back? A kickflip and a rail, some sort of a rail grind? You can tell I'm not a skateboarder, but out of the back of an aeroplane, as you do been racing side by side uh, all this season and uh, Jared you spent some time chatting with Leticia yesterday she's recently moved house she's enjoying yeah. uh, enjoying life and just loving the side by side action as well the side by side she wants more seat time let's yeah. be honest Leticia she's busy traveling I mean she just got back from Brazil she was in South Africa she's doing a lot of philanthropic stuff so uh, Leticia wants more seat time you know she's supported by Can-Am she has a lot of fun toys Sarah Price she wants She's she's been behind the wheel of multiple different machines and weapons. Yeah, she won her class recently on the Mint 400 yep. as well. So Sarah's been going well. She was a previous competitor in Extreme as well, which you mentioned earlier. Amanda Sorensen's actually taken over that seat at Chip Ganassi Racing. Yep. But yeah, three uh, we've got yeah Sorensen, Price and Buffoni, and then we've got Ben Mayer out there on the pole. So look at that nose rides up really high. Great start by Mayer. Sorensen going to try and go the long way round, but mustn't give up the spot either to her right hand side. Sarah Price trying to find the way through Price gets the car crossed up over the jump trying to get it straight on the exit before he slots into P4 but it is Ben Mayer in the Gel Blaster can of leaves. Yeah the Gel Blaster machine again 13 years old Ben Mayer an absolute talent and just seeing his different race pedigree he wants to do more he's doing a lot of different things this is great for him to kind of chop it up with you know either you know people that know like we, we talk about uh, Gregoire what are you looking at Two right wheels there Jared just digging in this is what Jeez. you've got to watch out for do you remember last time we were here it was Brian Deegan who had a big old role. Oh yeah. Just again, like we saw with um, with Lane Vicaler a minute ago. If you come into a into a rut with the with the wheel not facing across it, it's like driving up a curb. You, yep. you don't go up it sideways. You point your wheel at it, and if you come in too sideways, you can pitch them over. So it's that little balance between pushing as hard as you can and making sure you don't get the car dug in and roll. Well, great job by Ben Mayer. He's got the lead. Amanda Sorensen sitting in second. What's at stake here? This is the LCQ for our side by sides. Yeah, position. Yeah, out. I think it's great positions for the final. Just uh, I don't think anyone's going out. So uh, Sorensen's gone Joker. So Sorensen's gone Joker. That's to try and cover off Price behind, who's only 5.4 seconds back. So watch him for Sarah Price trying to get it at the merge. Ben's away in the lead, but where's Price and Sorensen? Sorensen coming out of the Joker lap. Can't see where Sorensen is. Did she hold on? Yeah, right she there. did just yeah, about. Did. So that was a good call to respond there and uh, get out in front. So Ben Mayer is now going to try to separate himself from Amanda Sorensen. You see again yeah, the rush, oh, Jared. You're wobbly. risking it. You're it's risking wobbly, it. Yeah. Dude. Weeble so, wobbles fall, but they don't fall down. You know, but you, you want to keep it where the rubber meets the road. And we saw that earlier with Debbie Bagby, not once but twice, unfortunately, where that that you know that track will just grab you and not let go. Really interesting to see the difference in the in the Joker predictor here, Jared. Remember these run different Yokohama tires. So we've got the FC1 is on slicks. Uh, the the likewise the NRX next are on slick tires too. These cars have got a little bit more tread, and that just gives them a bit more grip in there so their joke lap's actually pretty quick may are going to come out here the gap was 6.4 easily into the lead and now just got to keep it rubber side down for the rest of this lap Sorensen P2, Price P3. Yeah. So I, I, I'm still for Ben Mayer. Those gel blasters, FYI, fun, so fun. Absolute fun. A weapon. Not not a weapon of mass fun. Literally, WMF. Yeah. It's a weapon of mass fun. I've got one at home. I'm looking forward to some yeah. of that's coming out. You know, I wish I, I should have brought mine. Yeah. You know what? I'm bringing mine tomorrow. Let's I'm gonna go. you. Let's go. Thanks, mate. Thanks, yeah. mate. All right, Ben Mayer gets a checkered flag. Oh, this young buck. Throwing it down. Big P whipping that checkered flag. A man of swords in that Dixon flannels side by side. Sarah Price. I know she's uh, supporting that Baja Vita beef jerky. If you haven't tried it yet, 
So fresh, so good. Meat. Oh, you, oh, oh, you already got some? Lime is, oh, dude. I know. Baja I know that, jerky. Yeah, I stole that out of the uh, TV edit suite. There's going to be a hungry editor down there, but we, <laughs> we, we don't care, do we? We're no. eating that. We're eating, uh, we're eating Kate Osborne's uh, gummy bears as well. Yeah, like, we're dude, we're travel munching. edition. Look at the kids, fans of all ages. Ben Mayer gets the win. Amanda Swords in second. Sarah Price third. Leticia Bafani brings up the rear. Again, Leticia, she wants more seat time. To defend her, basically, she needs more seat time. She is so busy on four wheels, not Yokohama's. I'm talking Urethane, South Africa. Africa, UK. I mean, she literally is catching a flight on Monday to go to Europe for two weeks. She comes back. She's bouncing. She's about busy gal. Busy gal. And not discrediting anybody else's schedule, but look high at the fans. Line them up. High, high fives. fives, baby. High fives down there. So they're leaning out the side of the side-by-sides and getting a high five off the crowd. Great. Class 11, what do you think? Let's you got go. the jerky. You know, Sarah Price, she's going to jump in there. Look at that. I mean, you, you, you got What do you think? Have you taken a bite yet? No, no. I'm going to in a minute, though. Let's, Go ahead. Uh, you, you know, why don't I <laughs> announce this while eating jerky, well, eating, you well, savage? I, think, <laughs> I was going to say that. I don't know. There's probably some sort of a broadcast rule against that. Nah, but. nah you're fine. Yeah. So here we are. We're waiting for Sarah Price. as uh, the Baja the Baja jerky. So, so look at that. Co conveniently. Look at this. I mean, it's the same. Literally, it's, come it's come the on one. camera. That's Lime that's and Serrano liberate. pepper. You know, they're uh, they're they're out there. I don't know. My director doesn't like my face or nor jerky. I mean, he, might, he might be vegan. Well, I'm not. There it is, the Baja jerky. We got Candice. We got Parker Jet in the building, and uh, and Coley. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I'm going to wait nibble. just a minute, Jack, because there, there's uh, you know a, a, a lot. Oh my goodness me. Honest. Just give me that. Back. Let's go. Sarah Price, go on, Sarah. Sarah Price, I'm up. We're up here eating beef jerky. Sarah Price is hustling to get over there. This girl, straight out from a side by side, parked it literally down at the pre grid. She's jumping into that Baja Beetle, and we're going to get Sandy. So, got to get all the harnesses on, plug your comms in and stuff. A four, six point harness normally. Is that what she's doing? Yeah, chuck it Walk us through it. What else is she doing? Uh, you know, just just chilling, trying to chill, trying to adjust uh, her head from side by side with, you know, mega suspension, all wheel drive, and, and suddenly now we're talking a, a, a rear wheel drive beetle. But. She's, she's getting the more seat time than anybody. All right, more updates. Let's throw it down to Katie Osborne. What's cooking? Yeah, a guy who's turned his day around or even the weekend round, Kevin Erickson, taking home a win in that little bit of a semi. How much confidence does a win like that in a day like this really give you? I, you know, I would say a good recovery. Obviously, I was leading my heat as well. I would have made it front row, but I got a flat tire once again. Uh, bang on pace today. Uh, me and Travis, you know, I was second, but 14 hundredths of a second behind him. So not much. Uh, so from the back row in the semi, I managed to get a win. was perfect. I'm, you know, P3 now, so uh, yeah, good recovery uh, despite the puncture in, heat, in the heat. Yeah, how difficult is it going to be to keep uh, the car all four wheels on the road without a puncture in that final? I, I would say it's very hard. I mean, the, the, the biggest problem we have in that factor now is that the, you know the track and holes in the track and you know, every every time we, we come to, to the same corner the lap after it has you know been a new hole or a bigger hole so I would say it's kind of more luck than than, than expertise uh, but we're good you know Oliver P2 and P3 so uh, I hope we can go uh, you know be a good fight with Travis for the for the win today. Ah, a little bit of luck and I think that's really a pertinent thing guys around the St. Patrick's Day weekend huh a little luck Thank you. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Erickson, just Could give it some insight there. He needed the lucky clover, you know. He needs, that's what he needs. That's what he I needs. I got a lucky clover. Travis tattooed me last night with a 199 four-leaf clover. So, luck is on my side. No matter what, I always get to hold the trophy. I just don't get to keep it. Who's going to hold it tonight? We'll find out. Let's go. Let's Class go. Class 11. 11. Not 9. Yeah. Not 10. 11. Turn it to 11. Baja buggies are out there. They, the Baja, Baja Beatles. You Baja, Baja Beatles. Baja. 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 It's pronounced Baja. Uh, that was Matt in my ear going to say Baja. Yeah, our you, director. Our director. Just, no, Matt. Look, no. we're speaking American here. Yeah, and, and, and that'll do well, and but no. Technically, this is 
This is Spanish, <laughs> so it's Baja, right? Baja? I am yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just, right. just laughing. Regardless, yeah, regardless. It's okay. it's okay. Here we go, class 11. These are Baja beetles, Baja bugs. They race in the open desert, but here they are for the first time at Nitro Rallycross. Blake Wilkie, wasn't he this, the quick guy yesterday? Jared Blake in the purple beetle. He's Blake at the Wilkie's back the of guy the, to beat. Right, well, he's at the back of the grid. So are we going to oh, see a great yeah, fight through? Go. Blake Wilkie yesterday, to be fair, gapped the whole field and he's now at the back of the pack. Got to try and get through. Look, Greg Shapiro, Ryan Rodriguez. Uh, we've got Donnie Donovan, we've got Josh Felix out the front. You've got Calvin Cerrone, and we've got Sarah Price on row one. Price on the pole in that green beetle. Jumped out of the side by side, she's ready to go. All right, here we go. Baja Buggies final. Who's going to get the win? Blake Wilkie on that back row. He's the one to watch. Sarah Price doing double duty. Let's send it. Here we go. Look at look at look at the travel of these vehicles. A 70 horsepower. So much fun. And look out. I mean, they're tenacious, man. They 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 want more. They're pretty basic spec, but they look like a hell of a lot of fun. Blake Wilkie <laughs> through two cars at the back. Sarah Price has gone from pole to oh, last. No. That's a disaster. Wilkie coming around the outside of another two now. Yesterday's winner's gone up from P7 to P4 already. Now surely going to look up the inside line. The grip in these things is pretty good. Making moves. I'm telling you, look at Blake Wilkie. Went from 7th to 4th. He's the guy to watch. Donovan out front. I mean, you haven't called bugs. They're pretty much cockroaches. They just don't die. They just keep going. Our camera got completely roosted there as they're running right out into the dirt on the side of the track. Look at Blake Wilkie on two wheels. Risking Six it laps. big time. Six laps. Steady on. Much. Yeah. Relax, you've dude. got four positions yeah. in two corners. You don't need to roll no. it in turn three. Like, wind it in a bit. But I'll tell you what, Donovan out front continues on with pace. Again, our final here. Taking a look at Donnie Donovan. Double D. Getting after it. Look at that. The fans getting hyped for the Class 11 Beatles. Make some noise for them. The Baja Buggies. I'm making history here at Nitro Rally Cross. I think Wilkie's moved up another position, Darren. Yeah, indeed. So as they cross over the start-finish loop, Blake Wilkie up from P7 now to P3, trying to chase down Rodriguez and Donovan out front. The gap's at the minute 1.5 and 2.4 between P1 and then back to P3. So Wilkie really is trying to get after it. Just watch out for those, I say, those bumps in, in that second hairpin was where it dug in on the last lap. Here it is here, into this one. So you've got to watch out. He takes a slightly wider line this time round. And might get helped out if, if Donovan and uh, Rodriguez out front get into a bit of a battle. And they are getting into a battle. That'll only help Wilkie. Close the gap! Two oh, wheels! No. Oh, nearly Slow over right Wilkie! Oh, Blake Wilkie to the jumps lead. out front! Yeah. To the lead Look from P3 that. after a two-wheel moment. And he gets two cars straight up to the front of the pack. I mean, it was I, two laps in, Jared. He's done it. <laughs> oh, dude, we, yeah, I told Just you. Chill. I told you, Blake. Blake is the guy to beat. I mean, he is. He is. He's a gentleman that's absolutely helped develop kind of this class 11, taking the bugs. He's doing some. Oh, look at that! Being challenged by Rodriguez. Oh, he gets in the back bumper. He hooks him. Oh, and they're no. gonna drop. They're gonna oh, drop. Look at this. I mean, we got less than, or, uh, it's two and a half laps left. I like you, I like you, Max. Carry the one, <laughs> it's two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. Donovan okay. now, Donovan's yeah. back to the lead. Yeah. Okay, Shapiro sitting in second, Felix sitting, Felix sitting in third, Rodriguez, Wilkie, Price, and Cowboy Cerrone. Cowboy, if you don't know the name, look it up. MMA fighter, mixed martial arts, retired, hung up his cowboy hat, but now here he is racing on four wheels. With age comes a cage, my friend. Wilkie was 4.5 seconds back on the previous lap. Coming down the front straight now through that rhythm section, trying to close down the gaps. Donovan from Shapiro, Rodriguez, Felix and Wilkie. Can Wilkie get all the way back through the pack again? This looks like fun. I definitely want to, of course, Robin wanted to do this, didn't he, tomorrow? I know, but I don't think that's, that's uh, not on the cards anymore. He says, if I wrap up the championship, yeah. Robin Larson, I'm doing the Class 11 on Sunday. Not going to happen, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Oh, 
more into the wall on the outside. Gonna lose a few positions. Wilkie with the fastest lap. The little timer on the side of the graphic That's, there tells you yeah. Wilkie's going quickest. He's making a run. He's making a run. Can he get it done? Kind of running out of laps. Not too much, but not. there's only a couple left now. Side by side here, look, taking the different sides of the windrow. Coming in through the left-hander, Wilkie, P3 now, just two cars in front. Yesterday's uh, winner getting after it over the jump section. Come on now. Oh, Rodriguez, so Rodriguez in P2's responded by setting the fastest lap there, so knows that Wilkie's coming. And getting behind Donovan, trying to come around the outside line. Same liveries on these cars, so I'm assuming teammates, Jared. But if they continue to fight like this, they're just going to give the place away to Wilkie. He's coming in hot now behind them. Oh, man, look at this. So Donovan and Rodriguez. You can see the Jamaican flag flying out the back of Rodriguez, but look, here comes Wilkie. Dave, oh, look at that, we go on two wheels. Again. Holy <laughs> cow, what, yeah, the fourth time? <laughs> like, come good. on, man. <laughs> Zero chill for the Beatles. Zero yeah, oh, chill. Watch, watch Wilkie's like, you guys find it out. I'm going to just zoom, zoom right past you. If they're all going to oh, go down the right hand boy. side. There is one lap Wilkie to go just here. Drooling. Yeah. You're going to see him drooling, looking at this. Look at that T bone steak. Right like a on junkyard the bumper dog. Now. Look at this. All right, one lap. The white flag is out. Can Wilkie gain some ground? Those two baby blue beetles. I can hear the crowd, which is just loving Let's it. Let's go, like. make some noise. Come on, Donovan and Rodriguez. Wilkie challenging the baby blues. Inside, getting a get on in. East. Got the one up to P2. Can he get through the long way round? No, going to lose the position again. Goes P3, P2, back to P3. Wilkie, settle, bro. Settle, but Donovan, Dominic, Finn. Yo, there goes Wilkie, grabs P2. But how is Rodriguez going to play a role in this? Rodriguez set the fastest lap last time round, so the leader's not going to give this up easily. Up into the jump section in the back now. Here comes Coming Blake. around that left hand to Blake. Wilkie is right there, surely going to choose the other lane, whichever way they go. Watch this, take that inside lane, he's taking the outside. There goes Wilkie on the inside. Is that the smart line to go against Rodriguez? Will Blake Wilkie take the lead? He goes out front of Rodriguez. Rodriguez and Wilkie, one last turn for the checkered flag. Who's going to get a class 11? It's brilliant, Pete. That was amazing. Absolutely sign, amazing. Sign me up. That Yo. looks uh, that looks epic. That How looks we feeling epic. out there, Glenn Helen? Make some noise. Still racing, and they're racing for uh, for P6 and P7 as well. So coming down over the line now, Sarah Price. Oh no, not going to make it. Get up that oh, hill. No. Come on, get over the line. Shitty, you can do it. You can there Sarah. it is. There, there it is. is. Oh, oh they're waving at each other. She was waiting. <laughs> brilliant. The Baja Vida beef jerky. She's spicy, she's tasty, she's oh, getting into Bob, it, like. you know, beef jerky. Having some fun with the class 11s out here. That was insane. The Baja Bugs with some Baja Vita. Oh, oh yeah, so now the alternate oh, line, look, oh. yeah, I can go over that. That's, I'll do that, it's all good. Sorry, he said alternate. Not you know, it's, 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 the, it's the, king, the, the King's English chart. Congratulations, Ryan Rodriguez. Blake Wilkie in second, who had a go at it. But uh, again, bookend by those vehicles of Baby Blues. Greg Shapiro gets third. Donnie Donovan, Josh Felix, Sarah Price, and Cowboy Cerrone brings up the rear. Beautiful sight here at Glen Helen making history. Again, a championship will be crowned tomorrow, but man, Class 11, absolutely awesome. What's up, everybody? This is episode eight of Inside the Team. Check us out, grand finale here at Glen Helen. Let's go. Around three, yeah, Minneapolis scratch was a big one. Um, biggest one of my career, so, you know, I'm gonna hope it stays that way. Um, but, you know, every time you do strap up in the cars that race and drive, you need to accept the fact that those kind of things can happen. The winning round four at Glen Helen was a very big step in my career. You know, racing guys like Travis and Larson and Backroad, it's, it's always, you know, top of the top competition and, you know, we're fighting for tens all the time. Um, but, you know, I always knew I could do it and to be able to um, do it in round four in California was a, a very big accomplishment for myself. Ice was 
interesting, you know, I really enjoy how the car handles on the ice. You know, the balance is quite similar to gravel, um, just with, you know, more grip if it's good ice, if it's bad ice, you know, really, really bad grip. And I, I think I'm very good at adjusting driving style to condition on the fly, so um, if, if, you, if the ice was changing really fast, I was able to adjust and adapt, um, put the car where, I need, where it needed to be at the right speed and uh, that, that helped us be successful in the ice racing and walk away with both top qualifiers for the ice events is a, a nice thing for a Jamaican. Going to Calgary to race at Stampede Park was incredible. You know, we had over 20,000 fans each day, so the weekend had more than 40,000 fans. Incredible atmosphere right in the city. And, you know, there's so much history there in the Stampede Park. And Calgary itself, Jamaican bobsled team, having their winter Olympic debut in 88. Uh, it was a nice, a nice feeling to go back there and have the, you know, not, not quite the ice driving debut for me, but you know, pretty close as the second event and to walk away with the top qualifier, but terrible place and awesome fans and can't wait to go back next year. All right, some awesome Class 11 racing. Adam Henrique, Uncle Rico is your nickname, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Can you throw a football? Well, you know what, no. Can you slap a puck? Because you play for the Anaheim Ducks. I gotta ask you, first and foremost, are you a car guy? A little bit, oh yeah. A little bit. I yeah. mean, you gotta be after watching that. What do you think of the class 11, those uh, those bugs? I think I'm gonna buy a buggy for myself. <laughs> there <laughs> Maybe you go. make my own track back home. We'll see. So you said right before this, I, I put you on blast. You're a NASCAR guy, but what do you drive? What's your daily? Oh, yeah, G Wagon. Oh, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. No, so we're entering yeah. that. Late, late comer. Here we go. We got a Adam Henrique, Uncle Rico. He's gonna enter into the. You know, we have a thing called Van Prix. Do you know that? No, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah. But. We bring out vans and just see which one the, survives. The, the, yeah, the the, uh, the old Volkswagen bus. I'm in. Oh, it's yeah. Anyways, so speaking of Volkswagens, let's take a look at these Baja bugs here. Adam Henrique, player for the uh, for the Anaheim Ducks. What's your position? Forward. Forward. Let's go. All right. How are the how are the Ducks shaping up this year? Not great. <laughs> That's very honest. You know what? <laughs> I, I appreciate the honesty. I have not. I've yet to be to an Anaheim Ducks event, um, to a game, but uh, we share some homies and and the violent gentlemen, dude. Speaking of violent gentlemen, violent ladies out here. Sarah Price, two wheels, multiple. Talking about Hammer and Talbert, violent gentlemen. But you're gonna buy a bug after seeing this? I, I would not be opposed to it. Yeah. I'd, I'd make a track. It'd be fun to race. Cheap, good yeah. racing, yeah. having a good time, putting smiles on faces. Absolutely. You see the fans out here. So they got linked up, and uh, Adam, don't go anywhere because, uh, again, another member of our team, I don't know if you've been hanging out all day, we got a lot of chaos going here. It's nitro, all things nitro, a little special sauce, right? Katie, what's cooking in the pits? Well, uh, Connor Martell over here, the team just told me, is that he is in a mood. So let's go ahead and figure out what that mood is all about. Connor, <laughs> what's the deal? Yeah, so uh, we had a decent race going in the semifinal, and... Um, we had a rock about the size of my head hit the windshield and it somehow popped our external uh, kill switch. So the car just died on us and there's no way for me to, re to restart the car. We did see you just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, so it was a bummer and uh, I definitely think we could have made it right to the final but now we gotta go win the LCQ and start in the back again. And this LCQ, there's a lot of pressure right now on this particular LCQ. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be, it's always tough. The track's really rutted up, so um, keeping tires on the car is going to be key. Travis was talking a little bit about just the disappointment that you've had over the course of the season. Getting into the final and having a good finish, what would that, how, how, what would that actually mean to you as a big picture for the season? Yeah, I mean, if I could repeat Phoenix again, that would be huge, <laughs> but uh, that's really, that's not very likely, but, you know, the battling yesterday was pretty good, and hopefully tonight it'll be even better, and I can just kind of snake my way through, and it would mean a lot, you know, it's definitely been my toughest season ever in Rallycross, and just for my crew and the team, it would be cool to be able to get it up on the podium again. I'd say it'd be pretty cool, Jared, huh, to see Connor up there on the podium. You know, Connor, all things, all things, you know, considered, Connor has such a great attitude and, and, you know, Adam, you're talking about, you know, your team said, ah, not the best. What, what's going through a competitor's mind, such as yourself? You're a hockey player, applying that to race cars. What's going through your mind like, ah, what do you need to do to be like, get back out there? Well, you got to grind through. Yeah. You know, like he said, the, his external switch flipped and there's nothing you can do. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And, you know, we have those unfortunate bounces too. You, you can't control and, and you just control what you can control. And for these guys, I assume that's the gas pedal. And you just got to go back out there, I think, the next race, hammer down and turn your luck around. What's interesting too is, okay, I'm going to throw a variable at you. 
So, you know, the Zamboni's out. Well, guess what? The Zamboni third period didn't come out. Your 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 rink is chopped up. You got a whole different game, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's what's happened here. Yesterday it was all chopped up. It was grimy. Zamboni didn't come out. Now it's getting a little smoother. I mean, it, it, all these analogies. Are you yeah, picking up yeah, what I'm putting down? I'm picking up what you're putting down. I, I think you know, and I'm sure for the drivers too. They go, they get a feel for the track. Uh, when when it's not, it doesn't feel good and it feels choppy, you know, you know that we know that with yeah. the ice, and then you go out and it, it's smooth and feels better, and then it lets you talk go to about work. smooth. Talk about butter. What do you make of these all electric? Uh, some, it, some, it, some people are skeptical, right? Yeah. You're like electric? Nah. You know what? I didn't know that. It, and uh, Fraser came out to the game yesterday. He was telling me all about it. Um, I didn't know that the cars were electric. It was pretty cool. It's fun to see these guys humming around out there. Yep. Um, and you know, it looks like a lot of fun to be driving. Because your stadium is what? What's it called again? Where you play? Honda Center. Okay, Honda. Give us a call. Let's see Honda. <laughs> Let's see the H badge on that thing, right? But no, I mean, all joking aside, the electric. This is our first. This is our debut of this all electric, thousand horsepower, all wheel drive weapon, the FC1X. Okay. And then, and then, I don't know if you saw it, but speaking of ice, we did two rounds: Trois Rivières in Montreal. We did the Calgary Stampede on ice, on snow. I heard, I heard. Fraser was talking about it. He, did, uh, he won up there. Yes, he did. He yeah, got. He so didn't win. He got P1. Okay, okay. But he, yeah, he did well. Um, he did so well. There you go. Again, that, that sounds pretty cool. Jamaican on snow. Yeah, yeah. Which hey, <laughs> good for him. I'm sure yeah. he's a little chilly up there, exactly. but that, that's awesome. So yeah, it's been fun to get to meet a couple of drivers. It's fun to come out here today and just hang out and see what's going on. Um, and you know. We get to, uh, I guess, the championship weekend for you guys. So it is, yeah. The triple weekend. header. Thank you for hosting. I know Robin Larson, who's in the hunt for the championship, and Fraser McConnell. Both of them went out, gave him jerseys. That was awesome. And again, it, it was my, pretty my, cool. Yeah. It, it, again, it's it's great to. They gave me my own fire suit. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I saw all, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hey, now I need a car. Dude, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you for having that race suit. Are you ready to race next year? Why not? Let's go, Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico. He's coming up next. He'll be here at Nitro Rally Cross. But thank you so much, Adam Henry. So, Coley, what's going on? Right, so I've come back of house at the RX Cartel. They've got some timing screens up here. They, they, I'm watching myself. That's, uh, was that Meta? Is that what you say? Uh, but I wanted to come and, and see these two. This is Andreas Backwards, mum and dad, who are here now. And uh, you've just had a tattoo, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, my first. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got a tattoo? Yes. Okay. In Lydon. Here we go. Thank you. So th this this was the tattoo in Lydon. Now your tattoo is a bit bigger. We we can't see it now. And well, we maybe we can. Let's take a look. Let's take let's take a look. Here we go. Here we go. So this is. Uh, we'll go up. We'll go up. Here we are. There we are. So tattoos all round. This is what happens uh, when you're involved with the RX cartel. I'm afraid. Yeah, tattoos happen. There we go. So that's Andreas backwards. Uh, dad's first tattoo. I oh, don't take that off. That's got to stay on. You can take it off. You can take it. Yes. Uh, she said two hours, and it goes two hours now. So how are you feeling? Obviously, you've seen Andreas race so many times in so many different series. Uh, what, what's it like as a parent watching your, your kid out there doing big jumps and big sends? Uh, not uh, not everything very good. I don't. Uh, yes, he had a, a two rolls this year, and that was not nice. When you stand up in the middle of the night at home, watch television because you want to see him when he drive, and the first you said he roll, and you don't know if he go out of that car or not. <laughs> So, but then it must be nice when you see a win like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. To yesterday was uh, very good for us. Awesome. Well, there you go. That's Andreas backwards, mum and dad. I thought he'd like to know at home. Lovely people who are at so many of these races. Street bike, Tommy, what's going on? Guys, I cannot tell you how excited about my tailgate I am this time around. It seemed to be growing. I mean, we can look back and look at uh, it. started with a little baby grill by my tailgate, my rental truck, and it's turned into I got sod, I got a sign, I got banners. And I brought my actual barbecue team buddies. This is my barbecue brother right here and his actual brother. My man. This is my man, Michael Mixon and Garrett Mixon. They are coming here to man the grill that they brought. Tommy, I got a surprise. I got a surprise for you, brother. Check what this out. What do you got? Out. What do you got? The man Mixon smoker. We got chops and chicken. Yeah. And guess what? We got wings, baby. We, we flying oh, high today. Boy, Ow! We flying high, y'all. Nitro fans, y'all come out and see us and get a taste at nice. Tommy's tailgate. Yeah, baby. you can smell it as you come in. I'll tell you what, we got the good, good drippings. It's happening. I'm about to put my face under the grates. i tell you, and let me say something. This is free. 
free. If you come in by Tommy's tailgate, you can uh, throw some uh, some cornhole. You can play some checkers. I got a big checkers board, and you get wings and chops for free, cooked by none other than Michael and Garrett Mixon. It's coming at you. Come see us. We'll be here. I'll be shaking hands and drinking beers. <laughs> Hell yeah. I came all the way from Georgia. You better come see my ass. Come on. <laughs> Joker lap. Can Travis Pastrana advance on to the final? We'll find out. Here comes Kevin Erickson. The Yokohama Joker lap is a different distance than your standard Nitro Rallycross track length. This allows strategy to come in. Whether the Joker's faster or slower, you can play it to your advantages. You can use it as offense, you can use it as defense, and you can use it to get some free track if you want to go fast. New to the broadcast this year is the Yokohama Joker Predictor Graphic. This is going to give you a little more insight on who's going to come out of the Joker ahead. The Joker lap is always a little bit longer than the standard Nitro Rally Cross track. And the rule is, you have to take it once in every race. Now, if you have two drivers battling for the lead, a lot of times the driver in front can block. When he takes the Yokohama Joker lap, it frees up the course for both drivers to drive absolutely flat out, trying to make that couple tenths it's going to take to get in front, potentially win the race. Oh, spin! Hold on to it, Brad! Light it up! catchers here this weekend I think really are these Baja buggies. I loved what Connor Martell said about them. He said they're like jelly beans meandering around the track and I thought that was absolutely perfect. So much color, so many fans out here. Now of course these are air cooled, they're rear wheel drive, there's about 70 horsepower in these bad boys. What I love is, is that they're actually going around the track and they're actually existing and they do pretty well actually as well. One gentleman here who's been very busy with a bunch of the fans is Cowboy. He didn't know it, but I was sitting in his <laughs> in his buggy. And yeah, no, sorry, TV here, guys. <laughs> and Cowboy, I think this is one of those things where people are, you have drawn the attention of so. Well, I, think, I think these uh, class 11s have drawn the attention. <laughs> I don't think it's me. I think, I think it's the uh, show all these guys put on. To be fair, I did see a couple people with Cowboy hats, and I do think there's a nod to you with that. No, I, that's probably just their everyday attire. Real, but, uh, realistically, how much fun are these? So fun. So stupid fun. But uh, the best part is how terrible I am. Uh, so it's a very humbling experience. Hey, that's what this is all about, right? It's a little learn, it's a little fun, and, and it's also a little humility. Coley? So yeah, I'm here with Robin Shute, who is a uh, three times winner of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in the like unlimited class, which is the bonkers one. So uh, he's pretty crazy. We've had him in side by sides, but we're trying to get you into an FC1, aren't we, in the end? I would love to have a, have a go in one of those, yeah, for sure. So what was it, you've been side by sides, has that been a bit of an interesting training for you? It's not quite the same as uh, Pikes Peak, is it? No, completely different. So it's my first time racing on dirt. That was a baptism of fire. If you saw the first round at ERX, I did a triple front flip, I think. Um, but since then, learned a lot. Uh, that class is great because the machines are really fast and we get to run pretty much the same tracks as the top class. So it's been a fantastic uh, place to learn. I've since done some stage rally stuff as well. So I'm really getting my teeth cut on the dirt now, so to speak. Awesome. Well, mate, we wish you the best of luck with uh, getting into one of these. And of course, Pikes Peak, hopefully later on this year as well. The Group E LCQ. Here is the Smirnoff Ice Smash road to the finish line. Travis Pastrana, he's got pole. Ollie Erickson, he has second most seat time in our FC1X. Second row, Andreas Backrud, second in the championship. Next to him, the other Erickson. It's big bro, Kevin Erickson. Right behind them, you can see that, again, that blue and yellow flag. Robin Larson, our points leader. And then you got Timo Scheider, and then finally, that last row, LCQ, that's what is up for stakes right now. Four racers, two spots, who's gonna be joining those six drivers? We got a couple newcomers here, notably Benito, Benito Guerra from Mexico, flying that, you can see the green, white, red flag there on the roof. Ollie Bennett, Frazier McConnell, this is kind of precarious for him to be there. Connor Martell, he had a very humbling conversation with Katie Osborne talking about being knocked out in that semifinal. A rock as large as his head, he says, went up into the vehicle. So 
Keep that in mind. So, Connor Martell, calm. I mean, is he listening to Enya or something? What's going on there? She's very mellow. That was a deep cut, <laughs> by the way. That's, that's, up Enya. that's, that's a I don't know where that came from. Chad. I like it, man. I like it. But <laughs> yeah, okay. Fraser McConnell gave, uh, gave him oh, a wave. There's Benito. Come on, Benito. He's on the front row for Benito. This is a good opportunity for him to make the final at his debut. So, see if he can do that. And Ollie Bennett as well wants to make it after. He didn't make it yesterday. Here we are, take a look at this. We got a Mexican, we got a Brit, we got a Jamaican and an American. This sounds like a really good dad joke. I don't know what the punchline is, but regardless the punchline is, two drivers are moving on, two drivers are moving out. As Ollie Erickson joins us here. Ollie Erickson, haven't seen you, haven't talked to you, but I'm, I'm sure you're ready to talk some smack. We're ready to send it. Just be quiet right now, because Coley's going to do his thing. Watch this. Watch his head turn red when he starts talking. Watch this. It's beautiful. NITRO, let's go. Green light then as the sun sets here. Guerra gets too much wheel spin off the line. Bennett gets the whole shot inside. Fraser McConnell's got the car really sideways. Comes from the back row into P2. Guerra's inside him as they come down towards turn two. The Mexican's got the nose up the inside. The Jamaican gets pushed wide. Oh. Into the wall goes Guerra. Little bit of contact, just runs out deep. Car seems okay. So Benito Guerra with a little mistake. And we're into the joke that's got Martel. All right, taking a look at this. So Ollie Erickson joining us here. How is the track transforming? How is it shaping up from yesterday to today, even earlier today to now? Yeah, for sure. The track is much drier now. You know, it's uh, more packed as well, and they're they're fixing it between every round. So uh, we have a brand new track I love it. every time. You got to love it, right? I mean, this this seems a little more accustomed to your driving style. Get a little loose, kind of getting sendy, getting getting sideways, as opposed to the track grabbing you and debeating tires and seeing those punctures. Yeah, for sure. But you're out there, you know, doing 100% every lap. So we want to go out and, you know, race this F1 access to the maximum. So uh, the track is doing that for us now. Ollie Bennett with the fastest lap, Jared. He's trying really hard here. He's disappointed in his performance yesterday. Fraser McConnell from P2 goes Joker. He might be trying to cover off Martel, who's only around 7.5 seconds back. So watch for the merge here between Martel and McConnell. Uh, there's Guerra. They're still waiting to come through. Up out the jump comes McConnell. Oh, Martel's just there. The Jamaican might get inside him on the exit, a little bit of contact, but Martel holds on. Now this is the biggest fighting position we've seen of the other racers, right? They're going against each other. You know, Ollie, you're out front, you and Travis are on that front row, your brother's kind of catty corner to you on that second row. How bad do you want to win here at Glen Helen, man? Yeah, for sure we want to win this, you know, it's the biggest event of the year. Uh, having all this crowd out here, it's been, yeah, it's been a brilliant awesome, day. Awesome, right? So, uh, yeah, to top it off would be, would be awesome in front of everyone. Send Bennett now, they're going to do it. They had to do it because the gap's borderline. If they leave it another lap, they're going to lose time. So Bennett's coming in. Is he going to get into the mix of the merge between Martel and McConnell? Remember, only the top two go through. So whoever's third and wants this merge plays out, he's going to miss out on Bennett's there. Wow, well Holy done. Bennett. Great job. Yeah, it was the final lap. He had to do it. So look at this. The big fight is for second. Connor Martel, Fraser McConnell, Benito, not part of the equation. Look at that. Challenging Ollie Bennett is Connor Martel. It looks like, guys, you need to relax. You just need to be first and second. And look at this. Being challenged there on third, on second. But just McConnell. McConnell's gone look. the other way, Jared. They were getting into each other so much. He took the right hand lane, thought he might get through. But Bennett wins the LCQ with Martel behind. Really close. Big for the championship. McConnell hasn't made it through to the final, Jared. Is that his hopes of the title race over? We know it was a long shot for him, but he was there in P3 and he hasn't made the cut. He was third in points coming into this round of competition. You know, even after last night's festivities, taking a look at Benito, hats off to him. He says, you know, just learning the car. I know, Ollie, you had a lot of advice for him. You know, he's part of your camp, your Oldsburg's camp, given all these things. Great accolades, great racing, man. Just what's going down here this weekend is phenomenal. Congratulations to Ollie Bennett, Connor Martell. Ollie, I want to get your feedback in just a moment. But again, Ollie Bennett, Connor Martell are going to the finals. Unfortunately, Fraser McConnell and Benito Guerra in his maiden voyage is not going to the finals. Ollie, 
Walk us through what's going on again, just Benito, Yeah, everything. he has a lot of wheel spin, you know, in the start. Gets a bit tangled up with uh, with Martella on the outside, which uh, Fraser capitalizes very well on. Uh, I see that Benito, you know, with some more experience, he has the line, so he could have got him back, but, you know, uh, he's a rally driver and not used to having cars around him, so uh, he got a bit tangled up, so uh, he probably learned from him move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, Coley, what, what are your thoughts right now? I mean, hats off to Ollie Bennett for getting that victory. Yeah, I was surprised that Martel tried to get him. I mean, yeah, obviously it gives him, in theory, an inside line, but that nearly let McConnell have enough space to get through. Either way, McConnell hasn't made it. Bennett and Martel have. Oof. Again, the you can see the clouds coming in. The sweatshirts are coming on. The fans are still here. The, the, the buzz of the electric cars. Watch this. I think Fraz is going to be disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Frazier, an absolute talent. You know, you, you've you seen him come up through Nax uh, and yeah. through all these. I mean, both of us, all of us have. A, a big talent. Look at that. Okay. Uh, you know Respect. what? That's, it's just, Respect. yeah. It, I think probably because, Jared, it was in his control. It wasn't like a puncture. It wasn't someone taking him out. Yeah, Guerra in the, in the first couple of corners. But, you know, that's a typical rallycross bun fight. Um, so, Fraser McConnell will be disappointed. And that, that may, you know... Yeah, I mean, it's going to put him out of the championship fight, but brilliant season for him anyway. Still positions to play for, Jared. You know, he could still pick up P2 in the standings. Yeah. No, Katie's there already, yeah. so we're going yeah, to get him you, from you, him. You, you can feel it, right? Imagine you, I mean, the dread. You've been there. You you wear your heart on your sleeve. I've yeah. I've seen you react some great ways, and... and you know, I always say, if you boo, it means you care. If you, if you cry, if you're mad, it means you care. You you care. Yeah, yeah I'm more of the angry guy. I would be. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I, I would, no, surely not an Ericsson with a bit, like, with a bit of a temper. <laughs> no. I can't, I can't imagine. The jeans, yeah. no, no, I can't imagine it. I mean, I've never seen Andreas or Kevin get upset. I can't imagine it. Yeah, so I was talking to your dad earlier. He's, he said something. He said, hey, do you sound like your kids? He's like, oh, i got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is cool to see. Look, Fraz going around hugging the team with a smile. I do want to watch. I mean, he's such a good guy. I mean, uh, you know, we all do everything we can out there. Uh, he had a shocker, you know, throughout the, the heat, the semi. Got a bad position for the LCQ. He did everything he could. I think he, yeah, you know, you're upset, but th the whole team for him did the job, I think, as well. So, yeah, as, as you say, he, he, he did everything he could. He can't be much angry about Yeah, guys have been talking about how disappointing this is for Fraser McConnell. Your body language is speaking to it as well. Put it into your own words. No, you know, it's a terrible feeling, um, you know, when the team works so hard uh, to not be able to get a result in the final. Um, but, you know, that is racing. The Nitro field is super competitive. So um, we're going to have to go and look what happened today. You know, we were fastest in free practice one. And then after that, we just see, to seem to kind of fall off. But, um, yeah, tomorrow is uh, another big day. So I'm going to, you know, Cheer on my teammates for this one and look forward to tomorrow. As it relates to the championship overall, it's not over yet for that second place from your math <laughs> point of view? No, definitely not. And tomorrow I'll be going for it, you know, all or nothing. So It's all or nothing, guys, for uh, Fraser McConnell. All or nothing for McConnell tomorrow. It's always, you know, if it hasn't quite gone your way, Jared, if you are out of the title fight, that's actually the point where you go, you know what, drop the shoulders, relax, let's get after it because there's nothing left, you know. You might as well just go. Just go. Yep. Lick the stamp and send it. Ollie Erickson was just up here, and he is now going to be on the front row next to the pole position. TP, Travis Mastrano, Andreas Backrood, and the other Erickson, Kevin Erickson. Third row, Robin Larson, our points leader, championship contender, and Timo Scheider. We talk about him and his DTM championship, his road racing experience. Connor Martell and Ollie Bennett bringing up the rear from that back row. It's going to be a hard-fought battle. Let's see how it goes down. Papa, Papa McConnell walking past us here at the announcer's booth, giving a little shoulder shrug, still got a smile on his face and a bottle of rum in his hand. Well, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Jack, that, that, not yet. Not tomorrow. Yet. Tomorrow. Yeah.
Great show here. Just feeling the energy, literally my energy, my energy best pass. Who's going to get that? We saw that yesterday. We talked about the A-Shock energy, big air moments, right? We talked about the my energy best pass. Just the electricity here is really awesome. I, was thinking, I want to go on the RC car track in the dark, Jared. We've had a few goes, but they've got the little headlights Well, Jensen there, Button took you out at ERS yeah, in Minnesota. Well out that Jensen Button. Dirty I mean, driving. F1 Dirty. champ, whatever. Yeah, wow. But RC car champ, no. no. Andrew Coley smoked yeah. him. Yeah. He raced dirty. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jensen, we're hey, coming Je for you. Hey, Jensen, if you're we're watching. We're coming for you, Jensen. If you're watching. Feeling the heat wave there. A little, little bit of cold wave here. What's going on here? There's some sort of stare-off going yeah, on there between really the two sides. I don't know. Uh, again, the, oh. fan, the fans, I mean, the pits are full. The paddocks are full. The stands, you know, you can see some spots because they're over here buying some gear. All right, so again, the electricity, the fervor. We're getting shreddy till we daddy. The Yokohama Tires. Katie Osmond, where are you at? Yeah, I'm with Benito over here, and I think this is a, one of those weekends that it's a big learning curve for you. Every time you go out there, you're learning something else, taking it into consideration, and the good news for you is we got more racing coming tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow it's a new day, and it's a new chance to do things better. It's a, very difficult to be here for the first day, trying to understand everything, new team, new car, new rules, new championship, new track, everything is new for me right now. But uh, I think that we are improving a lot. Uh, now the time is not so bad uh, compared to the leader. Uh, unfortunately, we, we are not able to do it to the final today, but tomorrow we will push. One of the things that I think is so special is that you are learning how to race side by side with people, which is very different than your rally experience. That then takes us to the start of that LCQ. What went down? It's so different, so different from rallying, because right now I, they pushed me, I went, I went into the wall, I got a puncture, and it, they're happening a lot of th things in your head that you need to control and you need to drive faster and faster. But uh, we couldn't make it today, but I think we are learning a lot. It, today was fantastic for me, because I'm learning a lot from the engineer, my mechanics, all the all experience of doing this Nitro Series, it's fantastic. So tomorrow you will see a new, a new Benny, and I will push much harder. <laughs> Guys, it's gonna be a new Benny, tomorrow. I cannot wait to see that. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Benito there. He got. He actually got a little love tap from Martel. So Martel was sideways behind him. He didn't hit him with the front of the car. Martel actually tagged him with the rear of the car. And just that little acceleration, Jared, takes away the front grip. And, and he had a little nudge on the wall. But he, look at the difference between Scheider and Guerra. Guerra would definitely have the lap times, but Scheider's already got the race craft. And that's right. where, you know, like Chris Meek would admit it himself, coming in here, the hardest thing for Chris is to learn the race craft. So um, different skill sets, but you'd, you'd, you'd bet on a Rally driver in changeable conditions, slippery yeah. conditions, any day of the week. So the, the skills are there; it'll come. Definitely exists, and he has a he has a great personality. Absolutely love speaking with Benito. Just a, a, a really cool cat. So as we are getting our side by sides ready, you can see Amanda Sorensen lining up. Amanda Sorensen there, and uh, again, this these are side by side can ams at Dixon Flannel. You can see. What, what some people call a tartan. Yes. I call it plaid. Oh dear, you're going to upset the whole of Scotland there, call, Jared. I, call, I mean, it's I call, lucky most, call of them, flannel. most of them are... Well, yeah, flannel. There's, there's, there's flannel. There's flannel with tartan. But, 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 tar but a tartan is yeah. a bit of a different thing, right? It's like, yeah, your, so it's like your coat of arms. Yeah, and, you, and you have fam families have a tartan. So okay. we, we were actually talking to the McConnells yesterday. Uh, Fraz will be heading up to Scotland uh, with Extreme to race up wow. there. And uh, uh, Peter McConnell, who's as Jamaican as they come, was like, I've got some heritage there. I think Because he's, he's a Mick. Yeah, he's a Mick. He's a McConnell. Yeah, so you, we, want, we need to find out if there is a tartan for the McConnell clan. It's got to be imagine. green, yellow, and black. Yes, exactly, Jared. It's got to be green, yellow, and black. And I said, if it's not, just you've got to get one made. Oh, man. So will we see Fraser McConnell in a green, yellow, and black kilt uh, with the McConnell, you know, uh, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great. There's Ben Mayer, the Gel Blasters vehicle. We talk about, again, the flannels, the Can-Ams, the Gel Blasters. Uh, Michaud, he's the guy to beat, right? I mean, yeah. taking a look at these side-by-sides, he's kind of heading up this program, these arrive and drive star cars the star side by sides here's our grid scotty lawrence Greg alma show amanda Sorensen, ben mayer leticia buffani and sarah price so you got three females which is absolutely awesome uh doesn't matter it was four when demi bagley was on That's the grid right. as well we had a really good strong entry and yeah great to see so much taking uh, an interest in in off-road motorsport definitely a 
growing trend. So Michaud on the front is the favourite for this. Championship standing is leader, I think, at the moment. Of course, we had the likes of Travis competing in this earlier on in the year, but Michaud has been a class act. On the outside, though, Scotty Lawrence with a really aggressive throttle movement off the line, but he can't quite get there. Michaud getting a lead from Lawrence. They come up over the jumps for the first time. Nobody going too defensive here. It's Ben Mayer, who's in P3 in the Gel Blaster car. Amanda Sorensen is in fourth place. So Michaud, Lawrence, and Mayer. Who's going to go Joker on this first lap? Well, three cars got straight in there. So we split the field. Sorensen, Price, and Buffoni have all gone Joker. So they've all headed in. Oh, Buffoni running out, just hitting the wall a little bit, pushing hard. So a lot of them utilizing that Joker lap. There's a lot of laps. Keep in mind, this is the most amount of laps that we'll see from the side-by-sides. Six laps in total. That Yokohama Tire Joker lap. So Michaud, you can see, leading the pack. Look at Lawrence, Ben Mayer. Price jumps up, Leticia Buffani jumps up in front of Amanda Sorensen. You know, the, tra the track isn't as aggressive, so the, the ability to slide the side-by-side -side around. Oh, look at that, dropping in is Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence was quick earlier in the year, right at the front, of course, runs these cars for a living, basically, he runs the prep company that brings them. Michaud, we saw her up in Canada, if you remember, but that wasn't a round of this side-by-side -side series, that was kind of a guest event in Trois Rivières. But Lawrence is all over the back. None of these have jokered yet. Watch the gap back to Price. So Price is 8.8 .8 off the leader, but Ben Mayer's 1.5 off the leader, so she's maybe within striking distance of Ben Mayer. All right, so Michaud out front, Lawrence, you can see that, the, the lone Canadian, the lone Canadian cowboy. Look, we got eating pizza, pizza and having, really some, having, some, having a good time. That's looking good. Tommy's somewhere lurking in the shadows, eyeballing that pizza, by the way. All right, Michaud just sent down to Peter Laps. That stop, the stopwatch there denoting with the fastest lap. And uh, who's that going to the Joker? Mayer's there? gone Joker. So Ben Mayer goes Joker from P3. Might have enough on Price. The gap's gone up just a little bit. So he's hoping to hold on to that position from Sarah Price. And he will do. So, yeah, tidily done for Mayer. Now Mayer's got a little bit of clear air in front. May try and push to try and get the overlap. But with Michaud setting fastest lap after fastest lap, he's just going to try and check out the front. Yeah, you can just see it set it and forget it. Just keeping it clean. Doing what you need to do. Don't look in your mirrors. Just race your race. Michaud, I mean, all signs are saying he's going to get this win, but and here we are at that halfway point. Getting on the throttle early, Jack. They've got to get on the throttle early and build up. Let the car sit down, get some traction on the exit as the RPM comes up and the power comes. Oh! Scotty Lawrence rolls! Holy Lawrence cow. rolls from P2. Gregoire Michaud was right in there. Lawrence is upside down as our drone flies down and looks right in through the window. That's Make not sure what he okay. wanted. It went left and it went right, and unfortunately it went over. So red flag. All right, full, full track red. Make sure he's okay. Michaud will retain that lead, but what's get, what gets interesting here is he has not taken his joker lap. Want to make sure that Scotty Lawrence, want to get a thumbs up here. Yeah, that's the most important thing. The rest of it, the rest of it doesn't matter. So we're going to have a restart on this one. We might have a, a different duration of race if we go for a restart on it. But that so will uh, the likes of Mayer and uh, Price, Buffoni, Sorensen will be pleased that they'll get a second crack of the whip to try and get past Michaud. Meanwhile, we're waiting for Scotty Lawrence to uh, get himself extricated from that car. Wasn't a, it's not a big hit. Wasn't a big hit. No, it's just. But you still, just, you never. You know, yeah, I, I just like to lay out. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of absolutely making sure we see thumbs up. The light boards around the track, as well as the flags, give the drivers as much warning as possible. Right, so we're hearing that he's, Scotty is okay. So he's driving away. We'd not seen that, but uh, the, the guys have told us. Here he comes. Look, watch, he comes in. He's on the brake, pitching and the car in. It burp. digs in. He turns right. Oh, he nearly. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a bit so of a unlucky. tank slapper. Just he's, a dumb yeah. tank slapper. Kind yeah. of got up on two, tried to correct, went over here, and then just brap. 
Look at that, right lock, saves it, and then, in fact, it digs into the loose roost on the outside, Jared, and over it goes. But I say, light roll, back on his wheels and away. Yeah, unfortunately for Scotty Lawrence, he's going to be bad. But I want to bring it up because they're going to re-rack him. Michaud has not hit that joker lap. Are they going to give him a gap? Well, I think that I think everybody will have to redo the Joker. I think that's what they'll do. And he's okay. actually there. There is Scotty Lawrence. So he's telling everyone else. He's telling Buffoni to go in front of him. Okay. Whether he's going to the back of the back. Maybe. Sometimes if you've caused the red flag, so. if you've caused the red you flag, the you back. sometimes get DQ'd. Oh, so there if, you go. if you're so the cause DNF. of the red, yeah, it may be that he won't be allowed to take the restart. Personally, I'd like to see him take it because that'd be an awesome story. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, from the from the. Well, I mean, we're announcers. We want a story. Pont to podium was it? Yeah, I think that was one of the one of the good ones, wasn't it? What's a podium? <laughs> so I don't know what this should be. Roof to yeah, I don't from, know. Yeah, from, yeah. from roof to roof to some from the windows good. to the walls. Yeah, that'll no, do. Okay, we're yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> so here here's is. a replay of what happened to Scotty. Unfortunately, you see it just grab. He corrects and then brap, like a turtle on his shell. Sun is setting. Clouds are coming in, but the action is still heating up. We will find out who wins here tonight under the lights. And then tomorrow, it's in the morning. It's during the day. So we'll get you home by happy hour, baby. Again, a great weekend here as uh, we are seeing what's going on. And bring it back to the start grid. We'll find out the format. And uh, Katie Osborne, what do you got? Yeah, it's a little bit of a calm before the storm here in Dreyer and Reinbold. Of course, we know that Fraser McConnell is unfortunately out of the main event here tonight, his first of his season. But these two guys, man, they are ready. They are pumped, and they know that there is a lot at stake. Of course, as Andreas Bakarud is feeling on top of his game, meanwhile, Robin Larson has to show that he has game. What's your take on that? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that Fraz, unfortunately, you know, uh, I'm so gutted for him. And then Robin Larson, I, I'm, I'm wondering what's going through everybody's head because what, what are your thoughts? We're just getting some breaking news. Sorry that side by side isn't restarting. So Sorry, side yeah. by side won't be going again, Katie. Sorry for the for uh, yeah for messing you around. Yes, my <laughs> take on it is that it's tough gig for Larson. He's got to today. If it's tonight, he can recover with a P3 or a P4. He's golden for tomorrow. But if he has another P8 today and then backwards right up at the front, whoosh with the pressure. So he, he just won't want that. All Katie, right, Katie, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the update. Again, and getting all the uh, all the messages, all the insight, and yeah. having to put that microphone and be like, "Hey, Fraz, you just lost. Okay. What's going on?" I wanted to ask Ollie Erickson. You know, it's like when Katie comes in with a camera and you're having a bad time. It's like, really? And she's so nice, but you know, you come in with a camera know? like, no. oh, "I've come to see you because you, you had a terrible she's so time." So rude. I'm yeah, joking. Yeah, I totally you know, but it's, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I love uh, I love poking the bear. Protest. Protest. So what they'll have done here, for those of you that don't know at home, is they will have given Michaud a notional joker lap time, and that's based on the average joker laps, and it means that he comes out as our, our winner, 0.9 of a second up the road. Uh, Scotty Lawrence shown in P2, so that would be a may maybe, the, maybe the lap before they would have taken it the last time all cars crossed the timing line. So Michaud wins from Lawrence and Ben Mayer, Sarah Price, Buffoni and Amanda Sorensen. Top six for side by side, and they will be out again for another race here at Glen Helen tomorrow. Insta360 highlights. Here we are riding with Ollie Erickson, who is on that front row. Earlier today, blue skies, a little bit of clouds, looking like the Toy Story wallpaper here, but Insta360 getting that shot. You can see how dry it is, how the track has transformed from yesterday to today. This is last night, under the lights, right? So here we are now. And you can see, what's that? Seeing that angle from Backward, it looked yeah. like Backward's reaction time was quicker than Travis's there, hey. didn't it? You know? So it's, uh, either that oh, or here Travis, Travis is going to fight you. I'm joking. <laughs> side by side, coming back into the paddock behind us. Rear view here, remember the 360s, you can pick the angle. So yeah, great stuff. This is on board with Pastrana. Backward on his right hand side. That's the point at which Travis knew that he'd lost one of his rears. Unfortunately, just lands on it a little bit too hard as they came through uh, the Joker exit and merge. Backward got a bit too sideways. Look, love it. Yeah, just uh, getting hits to 360 on board. You can just see. I, I love these perspectives because Travis even talks about it. You know, here we are on the outside. We're in our we're in our ivory tower, looking down. You're like, ah, 
But when you're in that cockpit and you get the gravel, you get the sensory overload, the sixth sense of the unknown. That's that's the that's the, the X factor where you're like, how do you navigate that? And that that's a difference between a winner and a champion, and seeing what these guys can do and these gals even in side by sides and class, it, it's amazing. What a cool track, man! I'm I'm really loving how this weekend is shaping up, and put an exclamation point on an exciting season. The debut of the FC One X, the birthplace of rallycross and changing the game. And again, shout out to KB. That camo livery. What a great shot there. I was going to say, that was awesome, wasn't it? Like, just coming up over the top and having a little look back as you go as well. Very yeah, great cool. stuff from Insta360. All right, so the stage is... The stage is set, the A-Shock energy gap. You can see the flags waving a little bit, and that's showing you a little bit of wind, not a factor. You know, the, the, the dirt bikes, the Nitro Circus guys, they're over here jumping, and basically, as Ryan Cavalier, dabbing it up, but we are looking for a good time. The Nitro Circus guys, they're jumping, but doing some backflips, getting flown around. The cars, it's not really that much of a factor, right? Yeah, and it's also a tailwind, which is which is what you want. So, yeah. <laughs> tailwind over the gap jump, not a headwind. Look at this. The fans laughing, having a good time. All right, so the finals are set for Group E, and we are looking at next finals before that. So NRX next. This is the World Championship, right? But here is our Group E Smirnoff, Ice Smash, Nitro, Rallycross, Road to the Finish Line. The Great Eight are here. TP, Travis Pastrana, you know him, you love him. Double thumbs up. He's on that front row with Ollie Erickson, Backroot, Erickson, Larson, Scheider, Connor Martell, and Ollie Bennett. That's gonna be tough going for that back row for Ollie and Connor. Connor's, Connor's had some bad luck, man. I, I love Connor Martell, busy guy, the hammer, just a, just, I don't know, it's been dealt some tough hands. Yeah, I think it's been, I actually think it's been a tough season with Connor. Connor is very, very quick, and Connor yeah. came up through what we're going to see next, which is NRX next. Wasn't called that when he was racing in it. He's raced in the uh, the World Championship support category, the ARX support category, but in these cars. They've been using uh, GRC as well back in the day. Been around 10 years now. I was lucky enough uh, last year to drive chassis number one. Up I get it, you drove one. So I good. know. Dude, Jeez, you so bring it up good. every round, Coley. Well, it's not tattoos, Jared. I mean, you barely oh, mentioned it. Oh, good point, good point. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned it once. I no, mentioned no, it no, once. no, no, barely, barely. Uh, well, I mentioned it each round because I get a tattoo each round. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm getting tattooed right now, actually. Uh, right now, this no, is no, 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 no. That, All right, here we go. Enterrex next, World Finals. Jimmy Henderson, Casper Janssen on the front row, Eric Gordon. Tommy Howman, and then bring up the rear, Lane Bacala. 15 seconds to send it. Here we go. So they got Bacala's car fixed. That's a good effort from the team. That would have been uh, quite the effort, say, to get it mended after we saw it parked at the start of the straight. Henderson now, they will be taking notice of him. He caught them napping last time. Can he catch him napping again? Good start. Reaction time at least on the front row, but no, Henderson's gone backwards. Howman immediately slots up from row number two. Tommy Howman, who won the European Series, is right underneath the rear wing of Casper Janssen, who won the North American Series. So it is our two NRX Next champions who lead this six lap encounter at the moment. Yeah, Casper Janssen, I mean, he's got the target on his back. Janssen is the guy to beat. Just, just his, his focus, just the way he drives. He just, he has that, the, again, that, that X factor. Eric Gordon's gone joker on lap one, Jared, and that's going to open up the tactics for these guys if they want to go early, they can, as Casper Janssen took a slightly tighter line and Halman a wider line on the way. Halman looking up the inside here, the finish driver trying to just force his way through. Oh, they go left and right. They swap Ooh. sides and go down either side of the windrow. That was a last minute That's decision. Fun. Watch for Halman's exit speed here. Can he get enough? Henderson coming out, trying to look on the inside. Halman, gonna get that done. That's that the first time amazing. that's been made to work. He went from right to left and he gets the pass on Janssen. Well done by Halman. Great eye. Coley, you saw it coming in. Halman, that out to in. He, sli he slingshot. He pulled the slingshot back and shot past Kasper Janssen. Now, we got to fight. No one's made it work, Jared. No. Remember, the FC ones, a number no. of drivers have tried it, and they haven't made it work. And Halman, it was a last-minute decision when they did that crossover jump on the exit. We're in the joker here. That's Henderson and Bakayla. Bakayla right in behind him. But the big race is out front between Halman wow. and Janssen. That was an epic move by, by Halman. Really good. Bravo, Class. bravo. Where's that, where's that, you know, the 
Italian emoji, like, you know, this, that, that one. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That was master class. Well done by Hellman. Here we go, split lane. So now they've alternate. Yeah, yeah, oh, Casper. Sorry, I, yeah, I, you're I, right. Yeah, Casper. You're right. You're going to try it. The we, we went on the, the alternate. Yes. No, that's fine. That's, it's good. It's good. But it's ironic. Alternate. It's alter, alternate. alternate. I went alternate. It, oh, never mind. It's all okay. Right. It's Everybody okay. Knows. Hellman has the lead. Casper Janssen in second. Lane Michaela. Keep in mind, neither of these two leaders have taken a Yokohama Tire Joker lap. Hellman with the fastest lap, put it down with Casper Janssen in his rearview mirrors. I love the fact Janssen didn't go on that lap. That's very Travis Pastrana, isn't it? He's got enough gap behind him. Look, there's, there's way more than seven, eight seconds behind him. If he wants to joker now, he'll be a long way in front of Lane Bakayla. This is a two-car race for the win between our two series champions. Will, so good. He might try the high line again. He couldn't make it work now. This time, Hellman goes out to the right, does he? No, nope. holds the left. Now, now Janssen tries. Oh, it. He's closer this time, Jared. He could have a crack at it. Oh, Janssen going to try Jasper. the Hellman move, but Hellman holds it in on the inside. Hellman keeps it tight. You saw that. Blocked it. Shut the door. Said, nope, not today. Threw that deadbolt on and shut the door. Said, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you on the next lap. Four laps in. We're on the fourth lap. We're more than halfway through the race. Janssen's going to go joke here. I'm almost certain of it. He does. Pulls out he, and into the joke lap. He's, Get out of their head. Sorry, mate. Oh, you know, you man, know. You've watched a lot of racing, my he, friend. He tried, the thing is, he tried the move, Jared. Two laps in a row. He couldn't make it work. He's seen that Hellman is wise to the fact that he's keeping the door shut on the exit yeah. of the last corner onto the straight. At this point, you've got to go joke lap strategy. Now, he's got to work Hellman. But I promise you, Hellman will go joker on the next lap for promise. a spot. I promise. Promise? If I get it right, that's, I don't know. that's what we bet. Five? Okay, five. five. I'll need right. change if I've got beer. 20. A beer. A beer after this. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, Hellman is the lone soldier. He is the last starfighter that has yet to take that Yokohama Tire Joker lap. Casper Janssen. So, Hellman, now, here we go. So, here's the Yokohama Tire Joker predictor. Will Hellman hold on to it? He says They're he will. Yes. He says he will. And the gap They're went up by, yes. it went up by point. Two, Jared. So Hellman's got to nail this on. Is he going to go? Oh, I'm wrong. I owe Jared five hey! bucks. Damn it! No! <laughs> no! Oh man! Hey, there we go. There so we go, Hellman man. does not take the Joker lap. He has the, on the last confidence. lap. That's ultra confidence. So basically, you think he's just gaining. He's gaining yes. speed. So basically, speed, speed, Eric, speed. Eric Farn, who runs the team and used to spot for Sebastian Loeb in the World Championship, will have looked at the clock and gone, "Mate, you're faster." But Casper Janssen's responded, Jared. Oh, the fastest, fastest lap, lap. time's just come for Janssen. So they, I, I, maybe I should have been calling the Joker. Let's see. Oh, look Let's at Hellman using all of that left side of that of that split right there. Comes in, comes in tight. Here we go. So Hellman has to take that Yokohama Tire Joker lap. This is the last lap. The white flag is out. You see the gap. What's the split, Coley? What are we looking at? Six point Hellman. one is what the gap is at the minute. They're still, still saying we'll hold but on. But it's like six. point. It's like point zero. Six. I mean, the, the, yeah. I mean, I love technology, but sometimes it's our enemy. Here we go. Yokohama Tire Joker lap. Hellman, Janssen, who's going to get it? Who's going to get the win? Hellman's gone fastest lap. He's responded to Casper Janssen's fastest lap. Hellman has. He comes out of the joke lap now. Whereabouts is Casper Janssen? Not close enough is the answer. He jumps out into the merge, but Hellman is already in the lead. Well done by Hellman. Casper Janssen. Here we go. Which side are they going to take? Look at Casper Janssen. The, you can see the fangs are out. He's trying to get that traction. Hellman, he's going to go left. So does Casper Janssen. They both scratch out that slingshot effect. And Hellman is going to get the checkered flag. Look at this. Well done by Hellman. Getting the win over Casper Janssen, who's been so dominant this season. Well done. I mean, great what a, race. What a pass, mate. What, what a brilliant a pass. pass by Casper Janssen. That was just absolutely fantastic. That last minute switch up between the two lanes. And, and, and to get it done. Nobody else has made that work in any other class, and he's got it done. So good by Hellman, that slingshot, man. What do we got? Lane Michaela, P3. Lane Michaela gets third. We got Gordon in fourth and Henderson in fifth. Sorry, just that battle between one oh, and two was good, just so good. good. They, they checked out. You could see the difference in, in, in class was there. Simon Olofsson missed it with a, with a broken engine. I suspect he might have been in the mix as well. Hope he comes back for tomorrow so we can see a real tear That's up in this true. class. Yep. That was great. That was so much fun. Again, all the racing, this is what I said. We're just, we're evolving here. I mean, between class 11, side by sides, next, guess what's next? Group E, baby. Congratulations, Tommy Hellman gets the win. Casper Janssen in second. You see Lane Michaela, Eric Gordon, and Jimmy Henderson.
So we're going to take a look back. Look at the start that Hellman gets on the second row. He bangs the clutch up, finds the traction. Henderson tried to shut the door, and Hellman was already through the door frame before he could do it. So a little bit of contact. Here it is. So this is no, this is this is earlier on. This is in. Uh, this have we, we haven't missed the pass, have we? I wanted to see that no. on the far side that the where they went on the split lanes in different directions. Here you go. Look at this jumping. Now this is no, that was later in the race. So this was when <laughs> Janssen tried to get him. That back. was good though. I, I mean. Absolutely insane. Gutted we didn't see it again. That, it was, that it was such was a so good, move. good Such a good move. That, that I mean, Hallman just pulled it back and just, you saw him kind of pull, pull the quiver back and just shot. And he just took him out. Boom. Absolutely insane. Okay, now, what's interesting, I think, is does that mean the grip's changed in that right-hand lane? And will it be enough for somebody to pull it off in Group E? If, if, at the minute, the Group E guys have been looking at their data, and the only lane that works for the ultimate lap time is the left lane. You might take the other lane in traffic, but the left lane's the faster one. Has Hellman just proved that it's an option? There might be some joker callers, spotters out there going, whoa, hang on just a minute. Is there, that, there's is an that option. The there's an option. Look at that. Yes. Shout out to Hellman. Good lad. He's desperate to step up, Jared. They don't, the family don't have the money for him to just keep paying to race. He's desperate to step up to the next category. To be fair to Janssen, him and Janssen, they're probably ready both. Hellman's done a, a bunch, I think he's done 14 races in the this type of car, and I think that'll be the ninth win in it. He's been on the podium every single time. Exciting racing. Guess what? One more stop on this party train. That's Group E here at Glen Helen. Here we are taking a look. Best, best jumps, best, best yeah, jumps yeah, of the yeah. year, man. We started, <laughs> we started at Lyndon Hill, string this, the first ever gap jump in rallycross in Europe. Here in Scandinavia. Yeah, it, I was, this, it, well, this, this was the, the tabletop that we built at Lytton yep. Hill. Uh, they put, that's the gap jump in Strangnass. Uh, yeah, sneaky. Why not? You know, let's just get one in there. It was a smaller gap than we have over here. You know, we didn't drive any cars under it. Tommy had his boat under it at one point of <laughs> it. Do you remember? His yacht. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah I, I, would, I wouldn't touch that. I wouldn't touch that water. No. No. It's, it's it a was, no for Yeah, me. that's going to be a hard pass. Uh, speaking of pass, saw some great passes, saw some great jumps. Glenn Helen earlier in the season, Fraser McConnell who had a perfect event, TQ to P1. Yeah, amazing. The Erickson Bros. Look at that. He actually made that incredible pass, I think, just after that, where he checked up. Do you remember? He lifted, did. waited, and got That's underneath. Right. It was a lovely piece of car control. He, he will be disappointed. Yeah, you know, it's Fraz. It's like Fraz and Robin are both having not not great weekends. Andreas backwards doing pretty well, but we still got a big final to come. You know, people can turn it around. Not Fraz, unfortunately, he's not in the final today. But, it's uh, such a different track last. from what we saw earlier in the season. Yeah. They've actually, the Joker lap is a, is a different angle because yep. it was washed away in the yep. storms last week. And track crew did a brilliant job to put that back in. Um, and the, the, also the windrow that's been put in down the, the straight which comes onto the last corner. Yep. So it just means you, uh -huh. you don't have a full option of track width there. You love Arizona. Arizona. I do. Is, you, uh, that, that, yeah. I, it's still, well, it's, the, it's the arena feel of that track. And it is similar here at Glen Helen as well. Yep. When everybody in the stands can see every corner, I'm excited. Such a good time. Nitro Rallycross delivering here this season. You can see the lights are on, the driver suited and booted. The flux capacitors are all dialed in. <laughs> I said, I, I, yeah, you wouldn't I, be surprised, I would would not you, be surprised. You know. I mean, seeing the batteries, the technology, what's really great is, you know, we want to create the FOMO. We want you to come to an event. We love you watching at home or if you're here in the stands, but come to an event. It's a sensory experience because of the electric vehicles, right? And you hear the gravel because it's not about the roar, 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 roar. It's more of a, you hear this gravel shoot underneath the vehicle or the ice up in Canada. And seeing these cars and talking to the drivers, the excitement, the evolution, the progression, the future, the technology, what's going on, it's here, it's going on. So would love for you to come join us at any 
of the Nitro Rallycross rounds in the future. So, speaking of the future, what's going on in the future, Katie? Well, Tommy Holman can give us a little insight into that. Congratulations, first time in Glen Helen. You take home the win, and it was a very exciting race from start to finish. What was the little secret to getting around Casper? Yeah, thanks a lot, first of all. It was so crazy. The truck was full of bumps. I was so scared of punctures all the time. And yeah, I have been struggling all day with understeer a lot, and they've been telling me that I just need to drive harder. And now I tried, and yeah, it paid off really well. I was really doing my best there. All right, congratulations again on this win. Really making a splash with it. All right, next. <laughs> a Shock, a modern performance energy drink created for today's active generation. Yokohama Tire, make every drive a performance. Smirnoff Ice Smash, full flavor unleashed. All right, just taking a look at what's going down here. Some great insight there from, uh, you know, obviously we talked to our NRX next winners and next up, there's only one more race and that is our group e what are your thoughts who's who's going to take it well yesterday actually uh, the, the lad who dropped off our uh, big box of chocolates yesterday said to me who do you think will win i said backward i think pastrana is going to win today um, there you go I'm okay gonna, you know, just, yeah that's just i'm, I'm, I'm cool I, I like it i, I think I'm that's cool in that you know just given he was you, can, fast, you can only tell you can only tell the future by looking at the past and seeing the track conditions. Travis loves the dirt. He knows the dirt. He's more familiar with the all dirt, this this kind of nitro rallycross setup, as opposed to a more scando, more European setup, right? Um, you look at Ollie Erickson, aggressive, but Travis just has that little that that notch up. They were, they were in separate races, so it's so hard for us to compare them. They were the only drivers in, in each of their respective races oh, who stayed in the 46s. Yeah. They, they, they're three laps that weren't the joke lap, they were in the 46s. Travis was down at the 46 twos and a little bit more consistent within two tenths. Ollie, you know, we're not that Straz checking up earlier. Uh, Ollie was, uh, mate, we're talking a few tenths, but was that track conditions? Has Ollie got a little bit, you know, was he taking yeah. less risk with the tyres? Was Travis risking it all? He rolled a tyre yesterday in the final, don't forget he'll be aware of that but we saw when Larson rolled off yesterday Ericsson was all over him you can't they're gonna have to push you, you can't just go oh, let me save my tires they're gonna have yeah. to push some great racing today I mean I'm, I'm gonna be honest some really good I'm, I'm eager for tomorrow you know we, we've been racing under the lights with our eight vehicles and seeing seeing the the daytime tomorrow and, and that's a different element you know just vision uh seeing those seeing maybe those ruts seeing the the grooves you know what what can go wrong i, I think tomorrow is going to be a whole different race as well just you know not under the lights different elements different vibe just overall but some some really fantastic racing you know ollie bennett we talk about timo scheider and uh, you know benito Congratulations to him for entering, you know, the grid. Unfortunately, did not make the final. Alongside that of Frazier McConnell, hoping to get Frazier up here and wrap out with him. There's Benito getting into a little tussle there. Gets a text message from George McGannis, who, of course, started in NRX Next earlier on yeah. this year. He's really wishing he was here. So, hey, George, glad to see you're uh, watching, mate. Yeah, we need to get you back hey. in the car. Stat. There was Guerra having a little wall ride. After a little tap from Connor, Connor with that unlucky moment earlier on in the day where the big rock hit the cutoff switch and just cut his power, but he has made it through to the final. He's on the back row. You know, that that you, right there, Connor Martell yeah. and Frazier, that, that's where it went south for, unfortunately, the uh, the Jamaica driver. Talk about praise, right? So uh, praise, it's his birthday, right? Oh, yes, yeah, so yesterday, yes. Yeah. So it was uh, Mark Barr, who's the owner of Praise, one of Frazzy's sponsors, is Canadian but with Irish heritage and was born on St. Patrick's Day. So he went, you know what? <laughs> I think I'll go to Dublin. So he went to Dublin and uh, was having a few beers in Ireland awesome. on St. Patrick's Day on his, on his birthday. So, yeah, good one. Why, why not? Why not? Again, more cowbell. That's what this needs right now. We're about to jump right <laughs> into it. Only, uh, That's what we're going to do. Sugar. As we got. I'm eating the sweets. More cowbell, Katie. Katie, down to you. 
Yeah, you know one guy who I think would really like a little cowbell is this guy, Andreas Backerud. You're over here stretching, doing a little yoga. yoga. <laughs> yeah, it was a little touching your toes, you know, spreading out a little. How important is this being loose at an event like this? I mean, uh, so much stuff can happen here, you know. So you just need to be open-minded, loose, like you said, and uh, go for the gaps that you see, you know. It's uh, it's uh, it's not a scientist out there, but you, you just need to be a bit loose. <laughs> yeah, not a scientist, of course, being loose, but you also have to have some good vision. You told me this track is very, very tricky to read. Why is that? Yeah, I mean... It, uh, it's hard to explain, but you see Fraser McConnell, which has been like one of the top guys all year, and he's he, he went out from the LCQ. I mean, like stuff happens out there for, uh, and I don't know how uh, or why, but it just does. So uh, it's challenging out there for all of us. So, but we are all in, in the same boat, and we we need to tackle it. Well, we know this is a tricky track, and we do know that uh, there's a lot that can happen overall. And of course, behind him we have Timo Scheider here, who did set the fastest lap. In, uh, in the race last night. That was his first time out. What I love about what Timo's, yeah, you can see him doing a little shocker there. You know, what I love about what Timo has brought to the table here is so much different experience and really trying to understand quickly what it's like to race in this rally cross world in the nitro version. Yeah, there he goes, giving a peace sign. Of course, Robin Larson behind him. We know what's at stake for Robin. We know that it's really all about the championship for Robin, but really he has to get those consistent laps together. He knows what it takes to get the points that he needs. He just has to pull it together here this weekend in Glen Helen. He is one guy that we know can do it. Meanwhile, Ollie Bennett, this guy must be stoked to be in the final. Got disqualified yesterday. He didn't make it to the LCQ in time. Wasn't even able to run the LCQ. Ollie Bennett this year is the first time that he's been making some finals. So just getting out there, getting comfortable in that race condition is extremely important for him. Same with Connor Martell. This is a guy that Travis Pastrana said earlier, man, I just wish he could get it together because he He's fast, he's quick, he knows what he's doing. This could be the night that Connor Martell gets it done. What did he say? It really just has to come together for him, guys. All right, well, you can see the driving prowess walking through all the variety of drivers. You can see the 42 My Energy Excite vehicle, Ollie Bennett, the Union Jack, giving a little wave. Yesterday had a bit of bad luck, was trying to pull the line and said, no, nope, you weren't there within five minutes. Got Got a shoot pulled on him. Yeah, both the Excite cars through though, Jared. We've got both the RX Cartel cars yep. are in there. We got both uh what do we got? Both the Ericsons. We have yeah, both the Ericsons in as well. And yeah, and both of them on sports cars. So we've actually got four sets of teammates in the final. I don't know that it's going to be much in the way of team tactics. Let me have a look at the grids. So you got behind Pastrana, you got Kevin Erickson, so that isn't going to get any help. Scheider and Bennett are line of stern. Uh, <laughs> look at that at dog, the back by the way. Grid. That, yeah, look at the dog with the goggles <laughs> on. It's great, it isn't is it? It's napping. Left hand side of the grid Oliver Erickson, Backward, Larson, Martel. So Backward and Larson are behind each other, and Scheider and Bennett are behind each other, but they're not far enough forward really to make use of that team tactic of being right in behind each other. They're just a little way too far back. Dude, some packed bleachers here. This is absolutely awesome. Again, we got, a, see, we got a Nitro it? Circus show. We got a concert tonight. We got pizza. We got we got adult libations. We had a good time. We got a shock. We got gummy bears. Yeah, we can, and yeah. we got more cowbell. It's been a, it's been a long day, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're doing it all again, which is great. We are, and again, yeah. hey, take this into consideration, Cole. You know, I, I know you came from across the pond. I did. You had extreme E. All these things. You're a little exhausted. I am tired. Think yeah. about being a driver. Timo Scheider was in sad. So we, me and Timo right. were on the same hey. time zone, but in, hey, you in, know what? in Look, different places. You want, here, you want, a, you, want a, you want a shock of energy? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Guess what? Tommy's with the fans. Tommy, let's get it going. Send it. What's up, everybody? Stream back, Tommy. I'm down here in the audience. Hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Make some noise. We're about to kick off the biggest race. It's about to go down. It's going to be amazing, and I cannot wait to see the finish. See you guys shortly at the winner's circle. Let's go. <laughs> Tommy is getting Good, everybody Tommy. hyped up. Tommy. Tommy's all hopped up oh, on that mix man. of meat, man. He's making wings. He's ready to fly. He's got libations. Brilliant.
What a legend. Tell me your legend has more has more fun than anybody at Nitro Rally Cross, I'll tell you what. Right? All right. We are getting ready, and there it is, the KB Forever Snow Camo Livery, ran by Ken Block in his first ever stage rally victory. His daughter, Leah Block, ran it at the 100-acre forest this weekend. But guess what? Who's going to come out on top? Coley Sane, Travis Pastrana. <laughs> Here we are taking a look in the cockpit of that snow camo KB forever livery vehicle. The focus is on. Coley says it's TP's day. He says we need to get this car on top of the podium. Will tonight be the night? We found out that Leah Block, who ran that livery, got second place in the 100 Acre Wood Forest Rally. And there we are seeing Kevin Erickson, Backerud, Larson in the cockpit of Backerud, last night's winner. Let's find out what's going down and cooking in the pit. Katie? Well, you guys were talking about Travis Pastrana and his vibe and energy here tonight. He also believes he can get the job done. He said, if I can get off the pavement, keep all four wheels on, get that first lap under my belt, he thinks he really has a chance to put it on top of the box. He did say, though, he is squished basically between the Erickson brothers. So they're not only brothers, they're also teammates, and they're both very good at starts. So we'll see how this start kicks off for all of these guys here in this final. Great point, Katie, there. You know, uh, Travis is so dominant in the dirt, but he's got that little bit of asphalt, which is the start, that is going to be the Achilles heel, right? You laugh when you mention that to him early on. He's, <laughs> just, he's, like, he's dawned on him. Yeah, you're right. Like, oh, shoot. Maybe, maybe, that's, maybe, maybe that's why in Phoenix. Uh, didn't he win in Phoenix? I think he did, didn't he? Yeah, he, he took his double win in uh, the second of his two wins in Phoenix. Well, he knows he's not good on yeah. asphalt. Well, that's Give a dirt, dirt start. That's a dirt start. So expect, uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, so he, good. He'll get it right. He'll get it right. He'll dial it in. But, it, you know, his eight cars down there all looking to dial it in, and it's uh, it is not as simple as, you know, just getting away from the line and holding on to that position. I think the first few corners here could be very exciting indeed. So good here as we are getting set. And uh, Bakarud, can he do it again? Can he make it a double? Can he make it a triple? Here we go, Group E final. We are seeing that front row, pole position, Travis Pastrana, Ollie Erickson, second row, Andreas Backrood, Kevin Erickson, Robin Larson, Timo Scheider. He got third place last night on his debut. Can he do it again? And the final row, Connor Martell and Ollie Bennett. Coley, let's go. Let's go, Richter. Let's go, RPM. Let's send it! Here we go. Let's go, as Jared says, that front row, they were separated by tenths of seconds in their heat races earlier on today. Who's going to edge it in this final? Green light very soon indeed. Ollie Erickson with a brilliant start, but it's Pastrana on the inside, gives a little nudge. Contact there between Kevin Erickson, back row P3, P4. Erickson's cross over each other. It is Ollie Erickson, P2, Kevin in behind him. Back row fourth, where's Larson? Where's Larson? But he's shown at the back of the pack. He's a long way, way back, back, so way Robin back Larson there. miles off the back of wow. the pack, Jared. Disaster. This driver who came in here with that championship hopes, I mean, he's MIA, he's all the way back there. He's an eighth. He, oh, he has slid up to six. Uh, well, that's given the Yokohama tire joke alive. Anyways, let's talk about the lead. Travis Pastrana, Ollie Erickson, Kevin Erickson. As he said, he's switched between the Erickson brothers, but Pastrana needs that clean air. He knows how good the Ericsons are. He knows that their racecraft is solid, but he's confident in the dirt. Kevin Erickson with a big send onto the front straight. Pastrana leads as they come up. He's 0.999, now 1.1. So Pastrana's edged another tenth of a second out. He's looking very fast. He might well be risking it for the lap times we'll see. Meanwhile, Backward and Scheider have both gone in the Joker. Oh, Kevin Erickson goes now. Rear shot from Pastrana's car. That was great. You just see him dive off. Fastest lap of the race, Pastrana. Erickson's gone Joker. Where would he come out? Also think about attrition. This is the most laps we're going to see today in these conditions last night yeah we saw six laps very different track from last night to tonight a lot drier a lot driftier a lot slidier and it's not biting back you can see the dust looming there that's another part of the equation right yeah so definitely. Strong, look at that you see the stopwatch he set lap records larson is up into p5 but thank
thanks to all the drivers behind taking their jokers. So can he stay out long enough to get himself that little gap around the seven second mark? See if he can hold on. Pastrana's coming Ooh. a bit hot there with a lot of rotation on the car. But you he see that on. jig? Yeah, it held on this time. It held on this time. We'll check the gaps as they come through. Larson's eight seconds off. Yeah, Kevin Erickson's one second off the back of Larson already. So he's going to lose that place again in a minute. Martel trying to make some moves here. <laughs> Look at Connor Martel getting the side of Ollie Bennett. What I'm talking about here is the cushion, right? So that that debris. Look at Connor Martel being aggressive, getting all the pass of Ollie Bennett, but he loses it just like that. And this is where you're gonna get bit by the track. The track's gonna bite back. If you go into an area that has a lot of dirt, it might debeat your tire. Watch in the background. Bennett was on the one line. Martel's come down the other alternate line. He can't quite get inside. We saw Tommy Halman make that work a minute ago. Now he looks inside up at turn two. Sticks the nose in, nudges the tire on the inside line. He's not quite there. He might go joke here if he feels that he's got more pace than Bennett. And Bennett goes, so that's released Martel. You know, great approach there. We did see Travis and Connor on the podium earlier this season. Can they do it again? Travis was talking about Connor getting his first win. Don't know if it's in the cards tonight because Travis looks like he's off to the races. Bennett might get out. I was going to say he might get out in front of Backer, and he doesn't. He comes out on the timing screen just a split second behind him. Scheider's down in P8, so no podium for him. But this is all about Pastrana out front at the minute. A 4.4 second lead. He can now wind it in a bit if he wants to. In the background, you can see Ollie Erickson and Connor Martel. They were a long way back. This is a two master laps. class from Pastrana. Two, two laps for Travis, and he's going to put that KB livery on top of the box. That's what he oh, wanted. A mistake by Ollie oh, Erickson. Sorry, Jared. Erickson no, went sideways up the inside, went Martel, but yeah, you're right. He's Larson, fastest lap. Robin Larson's desperately oh trying to get gosh. a few positions back now. Come on, Robin. Robin, who's fighting for the championship, his worst position ever yesterday, wants to get back and wants to hold the big Ken Block trophy, the overall championship Nitro Rally Cross trophy. Look at Larson, he's setting the fastest laps. He's jumped up to third. He's I right mean, in you, there. Mind he, you, the diamonds to know that they've taken the Joker lap. He's desperately trying to hold off the likes of Scheider and Bennett, Jared. I think he'll wait until the last lap, just keep nailing those laps in. Hope that he can edge them enough and get himself, say, a, a sixth instead of a, instead of an eighth. So it's, he's done well, he's just, he's gnawing away at it, he's trying. Travis Pastrana Travis to the goes Joker for it. Here he goes, this gotta keep it. it tidy in here. Don't roll a tire off, just keep it steady. Really good turn, good speed. Who we got? Connor Martel, his teammate in second. He goes through the Joker lap. Here comes Larson. Everybody, diamonds. Travis Pastrana, a few more turns, and he's gonna put that KB Forever livery on top of the box. He's looked absolutely epic all day long, Pastrana has. He was brilliant. Oli Eriksson nearly matched his lap times in the background. Backward having a tear up here with Martel for P3. But Travis Pastrana coming up to the last corner in the KB43 Forever livery. He wanted to get it on the top step of the podium. He does it with his third win of this Nitro Rallycross season. The first three-time winner. Yes, Travis, you can hear it in the car. What a great drive. Kevin Eriksson and Travis back with P2 and P3. Look how close he was. Larson, Larson jumps fourth. up past Martel. Larson passes Martel. Look at that. The fist punch from Travis Pastrana putting that snow camo on top of the box for the first time. Shout out KB forever. Erickson gets second. Larson fights up. The championship is still up for grabs, but notably, Travis Pastrana puts it down. Round nine here at Glen Helen. Snow camo, KB forever. Woo! Exciting racing here. So DRRJC with that result are the team's champions for Nitro Rallycross 2022-23. Great drive there by the drivers from the RS Cartel P3, P4 and P5. They're showing on our timing screens. And Larson was close to backer of Jared. That is just going to keep the pressure off a little bit for tomorrow. And here it is, the 199 gets the win, round nine, Group E final, Travis Pastrana, Kevin Erickson in second, Andreas Backrood in third. They're going to hold the hardware, the biggest trophy is presented tomorrow after we see the podium of round 10.
So yeah, our results, our timing screen's got Ollie Ericsson at the top, which is definitely wrong. So Backerud and Larson are P3 and P4. I say that's a good result for Larson, Jared. He was dead last, he was miles eight. off the back. And then that little stopwatch logo kept coming up. He just kept pulling it back, pulling it back. He got lucky, the drivers in front of him jokered, and Robin Larson, the championship leader, right behind his teammate <laughs> in yesterday's winner, Backerud. But Look at this that means a lot to Travis, I think. A bit like the Backerud yesterday wanted Emotional. to dedicate his win to Ken Block. And Travis was desperate oh, to get hyped. his special livery. On, on the on the top and he's done it three wins this year first driver to do that <laughs> yes yes yeah, yeah. The go on travis erupting for tp 199 look at that just high fives all around a, a, a showman an unofficial mayor of nitro town but an absolute competitor and, 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 and a lover of life, man. Yeah. yeah it just, it just, I see you welling up. It's cool, right? Yeah, it's cool, man. Very cool indeed. Very cool. Travis, I say, I, I thought you would do it earlier on. So I'm pretty stoked, actually. Two out yeah. of two, I've gone backward and backward and it's for the Terry wins. Yeah. It's spotter Terry Matter. Yes, good we, point. We, we got matching tattoos. Dan Ansatiel, I know he's at the 100 Acre Forest. Normally a spotter, but Terry wanted to get this win. We got Travis tattooed us last night. Four Leaf Clover's the 199. But it's all about Travis Pastrana. Travis, throw it down to Katie. How's electricity down there? Guys, the electricity doesn't even <laughs> count what this is. We're chasing Travis Pastrana. This guy has so much energy. As you said, lover of life. And that is exactly what it is. Travis, this is a trophy that is just so special. For you and for the community as a whole. This is one of those wins over the course of all of your wins in your career that really means something. How special is it from your point of view? You know, to be here at Glen Helen is special, but to run that Ked Block livery and, you know, we just kept running. I'm like, we're going to get it to the top. Uh, you know, just uh, so thankful for all the guys at Vermont Sports Car, uh, everyone at Black Rifle, everyone, uh, Dixon and Power Plus, all the fans that came out here today! Um, this is absolutely awesome. I got my first Rallycross win here. I had my first Pro National uh, for when I was 16 here at Glen Helen. And that was stressful. I'm not gonna lie, it was really stressful. How did you know, Travis, all day long your energy was was such that this was gonna be the night. You told me confidently you think you were gonna do it. Yes, you could. Why? You know, I had a lot of confidence yesterday and uh, it, uh, it all went out in flames. Uh, but you know, I tell you, the track crew has done such a great job. Yeah, I mean, this was a river just a couple days ago. Hey, look at this crowd. Hey, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you to all the Nitro Circus. I'm just, I am so happy to be here. I'm so proud of this championship and uh, Nitro Rallycross. This has been a blast and uh, it's good to be on top. We've had a very up and down here. I hear Street Bike Tommy back there. That's pretty cool too. <laughs> Congratulations, Travis Pastrana. More cowbell. That's what we needed. And Travis delivered. Look at this. Start to finish. It was his race, man. Yeah, he was really assertive off the start, Jared. Not in a bad way, but really assertive with Ericsson. It's like, I'm taking the start and running the car out wide, and you're going to have to move over. But after that, no one could touch his lap time. That's what he did in the heat. Don't forget, he nearly won yesterday against Backer. Just if he hadn't rolled that tire off the rim with a slightly too aggressive move. It's a great passing. Bennett did well, didn't he? I can't remember. Yeah. Don't know where he okay, he ended P8, but it was good to see him in the mix. <laughs> he was in the, he, he was yeah, in the he was mix. He was yeah. fighting for it. Just overall, we saw, again, the, the, the certain checkmate moves, right? Yeah. And, and Travis knew that the Ericsons were the biggest competitors here this race in particular. Given the conditions, given where the heads are at, right? Travis knew, I got to fight him off. And he did, man. It was, yeah. just, it was so good. And he didn't, he didn't overdrive the car. He then fish pumped Jared <laughs> on the exit of the last <laughs> corner. He's like, yes. But it was just, yeah. And he's shouting in the air as he crossed it over the finish line. Absolutely stunning drive. Katie. Well, guys, Kevin Erickson told us earlier today that it was going to be a little bit of a redemption if he gets himself on the podium. How well do you think you really pulled the redemption out and showed what the statement you're kind of making? I mean, uh, looking back, getting that puncture in the heat in the lead was, was tough, but uh, yeah, I managed to, to win the semi, uh, start P3. Uh, we followed, you know, Travis and Oliver uh, the cap first couple laps, and then when Backward took the Yorker, we I took it the next lap to cover him, and it was very tricky to see in the dust behind there. So lost some ground to Travis, but uh, you know, great for him to win. But uh, yeah, there's one more chance for me tomorrow. Yeah, there's one more chance. There's a whole lot of racing still in store for this race here in Glen Helen. Congratulations.
All right, taking a look at this, the beautiful lights of the city. Congratulations to Travis Pastrana. How did things shake up? Well, DRR JC, Dryer Ryan Bowl JC Racing is your champion as far as the teams go. Olsbergs, you can see, shut down. Vermont Sports Car, Excite Energy, and DRR JC. So DRR JC gets the win overall of Team Championship. And again, the Drivers' Championship still up for grabs. Katie? Well, first and foremost, congratulations to you and the Team DRR. They are Team Champions here. How special is it to know that your win, in third if you will, is putting them in a position to win. No, I mean, this is mega. I mean, we, we spoke with the team before the season. The, the main target was to win the team championship title. And uh, winning it here, DRR, JC Race Technique, and uh, the RX Cartel together with Monster Energy. Oh, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> you were already debriefing there with Travis Pastrana. What were you guys talking about? I uh, basically t told him, either you win, or, or I don't know what you do, but <laughs> he's, he's like flying, 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 flying. flying. Or he's lost, I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, it's a, it's a whole lot of fun, a lot of celebrations, and a lot of energy as we're talking about down here with these guys. Yeah, the, the energy, you know, the, these cars run off electricity, but I'll tell you what, if they didn't have a plug-in, you could run it off of the fans, man. They're, they're, they've been great. <laughs> All right, so there it is. Andre is taking a sip. First last night, third tonight. Oh, and look at this. Here we are. Here's the updated with the scores. Yeah, so they, this includes their drop scores, but remember that tomorrow they have to count tomorrow's results. So Andreas Backward is within, what is it, 17 points of his teammate. Fraser McConnell today not making the final has hurt him. He's dropped back a little way from that. So it's looking very much like a two-way fight for the title between the two drivers who drive for the RX Cartel. But I do think the fact that Larson was so close to Backward uh, today will give him that little bit of confidence for tomorrow. Oh man, it's coming down to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, we're going live. Glenn Helen Groupie, who's gonna get it? The it's scandal. It's, if you missed the start of the show, go back and take a look. Yeah, Jared, Jared, Jared's <laughs> not, he's, he's not, he's not gone completely crazy. Do go back and have a look at it. So yeah, good stuff. Let's take a look at the My Energy Best Pass. Robin Larson on Connor Martel. Let's take a look back. It was daytime. Watch this. Rap. Boom. Yeah, and that was the first time today. That I thought, cross. you know what? Actually, I think I think Robin. It's you know the, the confidence is coming back. So he will feel a bit a little bit better for what's happened today. Um, but tomorrow is a is another long day. We're going to do it all again. Third time in three days. It's exhausting stuff for these guys as well. They've got to just make sure they've got the energy for tomorrow. And here we are with the A Shock Energy Big Air Moment. Ah, go on, you know what? Why not? Look at Mountain High, Mountain Low. Oh man, John Denver, right? Rocky Mountain High. That's snow that's camo. Epic, though, mate. Snow camo snow with, camo, the, with snow, snowy snow mountains cap in the mountains. background. Dude. I mean, yeah. You know, the mountains are blue. That was, a long, that was a long old show <laughs> as well. Good. That was a long old show. That was great. Well, Brilliant. thank you so much, Coley. Yeah, pleasure, mate. We do well it done. again. Watch, rinse, One repeat. More time. That's right, kids. One more time for our final season. Who's going to be the winner? Who's going to be the champion? Coley, Katie Osborne, Street Bike Tommy, Jared Deanna. We'll be here. Send it! Just watched Nitro Rallycross on your home of champions. Shake and go with true shake. Shake and go. Grab a true shake and go. When we have to put in the work, but the moving slow. Grab a true shake and go. School time and not joke time. Off the study yard, brain food time. Grab a true shake and go. When we up in the gym, we have to stay healthy and fit. Grab a true shake and go. Go. Shake and go with true shake. Pack
with nine grams of protein.